Hey, it's Joe Glines with the Automator, and uh, you, you've probably noticed this is a, a over a three hour long video. Um, what our goal initially was, was uh, I brought in Isaiah and I said, hey, we have this mentorship data and I'm trying to do this matching and it's really complicated, but we should be able to do it with objects. I thought it would take maybe 45 minutes, you know, to an hour. Um, it, it took a lot longer. And part of it's just because Isaiah's background is more using uh, GUIs, working with objects with GUIs and not the way we were using them here. But um, it was a, a really good overall learning exercise. Um, I do recommend you watch the whole thing, but if you don't, um, I'm going to put, because I don't know, because I don't know how long this video is going to be. So right at this point, I don't know what time it is, but I'm going to put it in the screen here on where to jump to, to see some of the wrap up notes of the conclusions and, and like the learnings we had, um, we kind of summarized at the end of the video of like, let's let's talk about some of the learnings we had and what we did right and did wrong and would have done differently. So um, that'll be here, but um, now we're gonna jump into the actual beginning of the video uh, where we start working through stuff. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Like I said, I, I learned a lot from working with it and, and we had some uh, missteps along the way. We, we built nested loop, uh, nested objects, shoving things underneath them and storing the data in certain ways, matching them, appending them, um, keeping track of, you know, uh, dropping out a certain, you know, like the, the goal is you have to, uh, you know, match one mentor to a mentee. Once you do that, you want to drop drop out either the mentor or the mentee, doesn't really matter, and then keep looping through the other ones to, to get the best fit. Um, but it was a really complicated process, but it's a great thing to show how objects can be used. Um, and doing this without objects, I don't know how, how it would be done. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Hey, everyone. So, uh, I was uh, working on the mentorship data. If you haven't signed up for it, it's uh, mentorship uh, dot the dash automator dot com. I'll, I'll put a link in here. Anyway, you can sign up to be a mentor or have a get a mentor, not a hotkey. And uh, Isaiah and I, I was talking to him about how do we match this up. And the first thing we did, just so you so to back up a stage, is we we opened the text files and just kind of looked at them and discussed what's going on and the the process of like how are we going to match mentors with mentees, right? And the, the, the thing is, it's it's quite complicated if you want a one-to-one -one connection, right? And that's what, right. to me, a, a mentorship is a much more of a personal thing, right? So uh, my my friend, Dr. Um, Cook, the, the who does stats with me for 20 years, right? Um, we were discussing of, of algorithms and we were actually looked at some of like the match.com algorithm, like how are they matching people up and this and that. Um, and it is it's quite complicated and then we just finally said you know what let's just let's just get this done you know what, what, <laughs> like something simple <laughs> yeah and Ian, the, the the part that gets complicated is the second you like you look at let's say we pick a mentor or a mentee you could do it either way you pick a mentor and we got to look across all of the mentees and say who's the best fit for this one mentor oh okay make that pairing remove both from the equation, right? And now let's look at the next mentor and go across every mentee. Like I said, you could inverse it. It doesn't really matter which way you go um, mm -hmm. and make that connection. Um, and the second I, you know, realized that's what I'm doing, I'm like, this is easy in objects, right? It's really <sighs> big objects where like, you know, that's great. And then we're gonna have to store, once we make those connections, actually store that, you know, that we've done it because over time things are gonna change. Um, and that was where you know, we, we started looking at this and then um, Isaiah, this is what I love and I wanted to point out was he he said, hey, first, you know, before we, we start doing any programming, let me start making notes on what I'm going to need to do, right? And right. that's kind of what you see here in the screen is, you know, uh, uh, just a general outline of what the goals he wanted to accomplish. Um, and then we started discussing a bit about, okay, how are we actually going to do this? Um, but that's, that's where we are now um, in looking at it. Right. So um, in this case, uh, we already passed this list that you see here is basically a step further. So the first thing I want to think about the problem, not in terms of coding. So only what is it that I want to do? So I want to grab a mentor and do this and that. So just about the problem itself, no coding involved. Now, after I know what the problem is and what a potential solution is, then I'm going to go ahead and think in terms of programming. But again, this outline here, as you can see, says nothing about the language. It just says create an object for the mentors, create an object for mentees. You could actually follow these steps in any language that you want. So this is how I actually outline it in a way that is so general 
that I still have a good idea because, for example, line 13 that says save remaining mentees to a file. Actually, I didn't come up with that right away. I actually, after I figured out the steps, I said like, okay, what, what is going to happen with the people who didn't match up, right? And then we figure out, oh, well, we should save that, right? That's the good thing about thinking in general terms that you can see some things that you might not have seen if you're coding all the time, right? So this is where we are at right now. And to back up a stage, just so, so everyone knows, like, when I was tackling this last week and, and over, you know, in the history, but what I finally did was like, you know what, I'm going to literally draw it out. And so I, I picked, I made up three people with three skills yeah. and I drew, I literally drew them and I said, okay, now what am I going to do? And that was right. what, like when I simplified it to three things, it, right. You know, it, it, it is easy. So much easier. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just, just scale it. Right. But that was like, exactly. oh, so that's that's what what right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's again, what we're doing yeah, just drawing you know freehand on paper, right? Because it's right, exactly. Easier. So in this case, um, the way how I'm going to be doing this is every single step I'm doing, I'm going to be checking what I'm doing with output debug. So um, output debug is going to help me just make sure that I'm not doing anything stupid <laughs> in the meantime. Like for example, in this case, I supposedly read two files. What if the file was not read correctly? What if the the so what I'm going to do is just, you will see a lot of output debugs. The funny thing about this is that your program is going to run smoothly. It's not never going to stop, right? But if you have a debug console open, you're going to see those messages and it's going to help you just figure out if something went wrong very quickly. In any case, if you have one of those or you have a, a, a program dedicated for that, which for example, Sys Internals has one of them, debug view is called you can actually just send output uh, messages and your program is gonna keep running. Um, and I could just simply run it and you will see that down here, I know that the file was read correctly. So I'm good to go with that particular file. And I could assume that the other one is read correctly as well. So what I'm gonna do, the object for the mentors and mentees. Just, um, just, just to clarify real quickly, cause we didn't really explain this. Um, the things you see, and also if you're a mentor, the, right. you know, your file is the things that you know how to teach. So if it's a one, right. if you, you say I can teach this and it's a zero if you can't. Um, and then the mentees, it's things you want to learn, right? So right. that was so, another complication with the data files. On each person in reality, you know, I have one row, whether you're, you know, who you are. And then there's, do you want to be a mentor? Do you want to be a mentor? If you want to be a mentor, what can you teach on? Do you want to be a mentee? Mm -hmm. What do you want to learn? So there's so it's a right. really complicated you know, file. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's another one. I'm like, oh, if I just break them into separate files and you know, so to speak, and stack them, rename them to the same thing. Because in my data file, these are actually called like Teach API, and the and the other version is Learn API. Learn right? API. So, so you I just to, named the the topic itself like this, right. Like API and then it was code. like, oh, that's so much right. easier. Yeah. <laughs> Again, so what we're going to start with is just creating the objects for it. And the, the, the simplest way would be looping through that um, um, variable. And you could actually loop through the file, or you can loop from the variable itself. The my preference is the variable because it is faster. Reading a file has a little sure. thing. Right. It, it Most people don't, don't even notice, right? It's not, they, they would not notice. But it is a good practice to get used to this because when you get like a file that has a million lines, well, your your file read loop is gonna be very it's gonna have an overhead, right? Yeah. What, however, the memory it was gonna be very fast. That, well, that, well, well, yes. But however, and this is what I have one that does this because sometimes you know, I'm a data scientist and I'll play with big files. Um, right. It can loop over like four million rows, and the thing is, if you're reading that all into a variable, it's gonna run out of space. Right, and that's where the that file reading loop allows you to actually iterate over the entire file. Regardless well, yeah, of, of course. If you if you're reading a, a five gigabyte right. Uh, file, right, right, it's going to grab all your memory. Of course, that might happen. But most in most applications, just a, a variable is okay. Now, if you are uh, using very big data sets, of course, reading the file might be the best idea. That's the yeah, reason it, why you have those two things there. That's right, right. So, yeah. I, I was just clarifying. There is a <laughs> right. reason to use it. It's just, it's not rare. Uh, sorry, it's not common with auto hotkey because we're not usually dealing with big files. Right. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is just parsing this file by new lines, ignoring the carriage returns, 
I have got so many surprises with those character terms. No doubt. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. It's okay yeah. if you just do that. Right. <laughs> now, um, for each line, so I know that the first line is just the the um, um, the headers, so I don't care about those. Oh, hold on, let me see if I could if I care about them. I could use them as the as the, the keys, keys, right? Right. right. So I could use that. What a nest it. Yeah. Right, right, right. So in this case, what I could do is just um, if a uh, index equals one in this case, right? So I'm going to do a string split, and I will use them as the keys. Right. So for each of them, I, I will just parse them again. Just parse that guy. And it's going to be a loop field in this case because it's the field that I'm actually looking at. And for them, I'm going to parse them via tabs because that's what they have. And I'm going to use an object. Let's call it mentors, right? That's the object itself. And I'm going to have it. It's going to be an array, probably. All of that can change later on. So um, let me see something. In this case, we're going to string the uh, whole uh, mentors. And I'm going to have the A loop field in here. And I'm going to set it to something. It doesn't matter because I just want it as a key later on. I'm going to, and again, so what we're going to do, um, just one second. It's going to be in a, a double array. So I'm going to have like the ID for the topic and the ID for the user that I'm referring to, maybe. We'll see that. Now, I could take a look at how that is looking right now. So I'm going to break my code in here. And I could just go ahead and take a look at the local and global variables. So right now, we're dealing with global variables. And I see the mentors. And I would see that all my so my object has their own kind of like topic, right? Now, this is the question that I have. So those are the topics, but I want to make it, well, the ID is gonna be the first person, it's gonna be fine. Now for each of these guys, I just want to push that as to mentors, push, and I want to push an object onto it. That's what I want to be doing. I'm just gonna enter a new object into the, or re, the oh, let me see, hold on. Let me think this through first. <laughs> so what I want to do. We want it nested under each person, don't we? That's what I meant. So you see this yeah. mentor thing, this, this whole thing? Yeah. I just want to have that for a specific person, not as, an, not as the key. They are not the keys. They, those keys actually belong to a specific user. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I could use a index in here as. Well, that ID is the first one. Do we not want to use that instead? So we know exactly who we're, I, I mean, I, I understand mean, programmatically inside the loop, it's going to keep it. It's going to be easier, right? Yeah. But All right. You want to use, you want to use the ID as the, well, I could use the ID as the key, right? Right. Right, so um, in this case, the ID would be the first guy here. You see the, um, now hold on. Because we have, when we parse the first time, we have a whole line, right? So right, right now the, the A loop field has the whole, that line. And this is what I, what I said that I wanted kind of like to uh, ignore that, but I don't want to ignore it. You know what I want to do with this? I'm gonna save that into a variable. So this is gonna be called headers. Right, and I'm going to save a loop field, right? Now, and then we're going to continue. So we just got our headers, right? Now, for each mentor that pops up, I already have my headers, which I'm going to loop by, right? So I'm going to go ahead and loop ours um, uh, headers, right? So I have my headers, I'm going to go one by one. Um, now I have a whole line here that has my whole information. In this case, it's going to be the guys here. Now I'm going to parse it via tab in this case. There we go. 
And so for each of the headers, I'm going to do the following. I could string split this up. So I have a header. I am actually on ID. That's my first header. That's what I'm going to use for mentors. Then header, that's going right. to be in the field, right? Now for that guy, I want to actually first of string split the whole thing also. We are split a loop field. I tabs. I can just use this. And what that is going to do, this is the data. Now, what happens is, as the data is in the same order as the headers, the ID, the the a loop the a index one is going to belong to id right so you will see what i mean um i have the data is going to be data a index now let's go ahead and output g bar this guy so we can go ahead and take a look at if i'm actually thinking about it correctly so oh no, that's not what I meant. I want to pause here. Now, for our mentors, a loop field is going to be ID, right? And for the data index, this guy, what should have for number one, let's go ahead and take a look at it, data, number one is going to be the ID. You see what I mean? Yeah. Now, when I go to uh, the second field, let's go ahead and go to the second field. Now, we are in a index two the data is going to be zero, which is the API message. So you see that it's zero here. So when I am in file folder XML, it should be a one in the index. So let me see that. So we go here, DOM, DLL calls, file folder XML, right? So this is file folder here. That file folder, which is this one here, should contain a one when the data has that A index. You see what I mean? Now, a index six, would, which would be my data, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's actually showing up as zero. Am I seeing the data correctly? Come on, let me see. I know that I have file folder, but the index six is coming up at zero. Am I looking at the data correctly? I'll take a look at that. So let's go ahead and do the following. Oh, the sixth one is a zero. It is? Yeah, if you count, um, you go down one, there, two, count, three, that's what I four, just did. Five, yeah. six, seven, eight. So it's the eight, the one that we are expecting. So yeah, the problem is the words are wider, right? It, oh, yeah. So yeah. that's what it is. Eight and gaming. Yeah. So gaming, which is yeah. eight here, should show up as a one in here, which in here should say gaming. So basically, you see how I'm matching the stuff right there, right? So now, after I do that, that's going to be done automatically. If I uh, say, for example, I want to know what, um, hold, on. Uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, there's something that I'm missing here. So the ID for this guy, I want to actually kind of like ID him, right? So the ID for these guys would be always data A index one. So data one is always his ID, right? Well, or you could use the first field. But either way. When you say first field, you're talking about? The, the first field within the row, you could actually use their ID. Yeah, so that's the one that I'm using. Data one would be oh, I'm sorry. always, okay. right? So I, I, that's, that's exactly what I'm doing. So, so for that guy, it is always going to be data one. And in the next loop, data one would refer to the other guy. So uh, yeah. I should have the different. So if I go ahead and say at the end of my loop, right? I just want to know mentors, um, and I want the ID one, which is his ID, and I want to know his, uh, let me see, his gaming, we said, right? Gaming, right? So right. we say gaming, right? Yeah. Yeah. If I do that, that should come out as a one. Output right. That should come up down here as a one. So 
Let's go ahead and do that and remove this loop for now. And if I restore it, right? So let's go ahead and try it again. This one, output. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course. There we go. Let's see, where are we? So something went wrong. Now, now let's go ahead and take a look at my mentors data. Mentors object. Oh, it's empty. Why? I am actually now the mentors. Huh. I think here might be my problem. Let me just one second. So we just string split it. We did our we did have our information showing up correctly, right? So let me see. Letter one. I do have my A loop field. Hang on. Is this the whole thing? Oh, that's because I'm outside of that. I'll go ahead and do this again. Just jumping that line. Why is it jumping that line? Oh, I'm just one second. Wow, it you're is pressing jumping. the headers there. Don't right. Don't. I I do want to pass parse the headers in this location because I want to pass them as um an, a field here. So I want to pass for the ID one. I want to have the I, API there. So I want to have each of the headers right there. You see what I mean? Yeah. Right? So unless, oh, oh no, hold on. I think I'm doing it. Let me, let me remove this part here. Let's go ahead and do that. And again, a few seconds ago, it was actually kind of like, oh. Right, so, right. For this one, for the API, now, where is my data A index is, oh, that's two. So let's go ahead and start all over. And it says, oh, we're jumping the first one. Yeah, we could just go ahead and not jump. That's what happens. So I could, for the first one, which is ID, what? data, API controls, that's, that's not what I'm looking at. I would, hold on. And then, let's do the poll. Okay. First, that. What does what does that hold? So hold on, just one second. Data. Oh, right. So now the problem is, I do have my headers. Where are we in, in index two? No, in index four. Why do you still have? Hold on. So let me just one second. There's something that I'm not getting right here. So if I index one, the, the, the whole line is just the headers. I know that, right? So that means that if I grab this line and split it, that's gonna give me an array, an array of that. Okay, so that I, I could understand that. So for this kind, that's what he's doing. It's okay, I get it. After you jump this, so I don't want to do that for the first one. Now here, my data should look different. 
Right, exactly. So yeah, I know what this is, I know what is happening now. So um, I don't want to do any of this if A and X, uh, more than one, this more than one. That's what I want to do. So this kind of things. Oh, you're still I'm playing with the headers? I'm okay. sorry? So at, right now you're still playing with the headers. You, you only want to focus on the headers right now. Right, so the, no, I want to not do this stuff if we are on at the headers. I don't want to save that information onto my object. Well, then you don't want it if A index is greater than one. Oh, right. I'm sorry, yeah. Right, so uh, at two, yeah, then yeah. you're gonna start one, right. you want to start doing that. So yeah, you don't want to do it on you, your- Yeah, I have well, my headers. That's why I was gonna ask you earlier, why didn't you do an else instead of, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, so in this case, I could do that or just simply say else here because we have an in statement on the top, right? So, right. but the problem with that is that um, I do get my headers. I do want to do that. Um, let me see something. Let me see if that, because at the beginning, I only had it. I, I was jumping. I was doing a continue there, right? But for some reason, now here, my data should show up as a bunch of values. That's what I want to actually say. Now, my ID is going to have one in there. So let me see the line. Right. So that's my ID. Right. So now I don't need this line here. Let's try it again. Right, so this guy is going to give me the ID, the zero. So that's going to be reading the data as, as it is showing up. So that's okay. And then later on, I just want to know main first one, right? So yeah. I have his ID, that would be his. So ID would be one, right? And what I want to know is, for example, I just want to get the information for the one I want to know his um, API, uh, for example, his API uh, right. object. So what? What? So in this case, this thing is not how I how I want to record it because right now, well, I cannot sort. I I cannot find a specific person just with this number. So for example, if I want to know the, um, the um, let me let me show you what I mean. Let me leave this off, let me remove the breaks, just do it. Um, let me put it here, start over, there we go. Now, my mentors, variable here, my mentors object, it's going to contain like, it's going to be replaced every single time. And that's not what I want. You see what I mean? Yeah. You so want now the la the, right. right. So, so I want to kind of like have this object right. and each of the people have to be in their own. So right. the data for one of them, which is what I was kind of trying to do here, is like the idea of it, yes. which would be this guy here, right? So I have it's his ID and his object, and that I do not want to do for the first. We will see how that works yeah. right now. That's what I was trying to do, but at some point it was so. Now it is failing. You see that is empty here. You see that? Yeah. And that's because the way how I'm, I think it has to do with how I'm describing this guy here. You see what I mean? Maybe that is the problem because mm. let me go ahead and do something. So mm. right, so what I'm looking at is maybe I should just do the object as I was actually kind of intending it to, to be like, you know, this kind of object and then just filling it out, right? right. That would be um, something like this, right? Now, I would need like, uh, 
for the ID, I would need some data, right? That's what I'm kind of like thinking. And then for each person, I would use like ID. So the ID would be that. And for data, I would actually kind of like have the structure that we are actually right, yeah. looking for. Right. See what I mean? I do. Yeah. So this is more or less what we're looking for. And here would be a loop field, right? Now, um, if you are here, if a index one behaves a little bit differently because we want to grab the mentors the id equals data a index right so i just want to say that's the number one the id would be saved in its id right else the mentors data variable is going to hold the data for that particular thing that's more See, or less what, what i usually do is i use a stir split and say, you know how I added showed you today when I was I used the dot one to say give me the first, you know, the first item in this array, mm -hmm. the stir split. And I'll use that to set the key, and then I say the value equals you know the rest of what you're doing, right? And then it's all on one line because you you have access to that without in in the loop. But um, I did not. No, I did not understand. Well, just keep going where you're going. I don't want to throw. Right. It. So let me let me. Yep. Right now, just let's go ahead and take a look at what the mentor data looks like. So the mentor object, again, now the thing is that as I'm actually kind of like replacing, what I want to do is actually add an object into the mentors. I would say like push. Now, hold on. It's not looking like I'm going. Can you explain what we were actually referring to before I continue? Well, it, it, on eighteen and nineteen, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have in, in twenty. I and wouldn't have those, right? So you wouldn't have these guys, right? So you would just do it in one line. That's what you're saying. Yeah, and, and I would be, I would be using in line twenty, and on the left side, because you, you're basically wanting to shove everything into that key, right? So the um, start, make a new line just so it's it's clear, and then we'll will adapt right. so we go so, to mentors yeah uh, well yeah because you're going to shove stuff into there so and then put your your brackets because this is where we're going to now here is going to you're going to use stir split off of and this is where i don't use the a loop field but this is where i'm so i'm getting a little confused on it but that's right. that's going to be your array right? yeah uh, this is where i'm like i said this is where i'm confused but the headers dot one will give you the first is, is right. see, it's not the header, so is it? I don't even want the headers. Well, I was trying to get the ID of the person, which is the oh, so that, that would be on data. So that's here. Oh, okay, that's from this my is data. So this is from, yeah, data. So from the data, I and that is actually an array. So basically, yeah. I could just simply use data one here because that's already split. Oh, okay, here. right. So I already split it. Right? Okay, so and now then, data. Let me, let, me, let me make sure that I'm getting the correct thing. So let me go ahead and, um, right. So now that I hear should have, let's see what that is. Mentors data ID, what? But that's right, isn't it? It's the, the first time it's one. No, no, but I'm seeing here that it has kind of like this whole object in there. Oh, okay. Which, was not expected. I, I was expecting you see this, but on zeros and ones. That's what I'm actually expecting. What what does a loop field has? Only ID. Oh, yeah, because it changed. We haven't shoved anything no, 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 no. in the data yet. I haven't done anything with it, right? Right. Now. Oh, let me see. That uh. There you go. Right. So, data. Is one. Yeah, I'm not sure where where I Just, got that from. Yeah, well, comment 19 out for now, right? Because I think that's that's great right, so your data. Right. So let's go ahead and try that. No. Yeah. 
So we have the zero, which is for the ID here, and the data, which is an object that I just created, which is just there, right? So it has nothing on it. So that's for mentors. Now, data here is empty exactly. Okay, now that's still not good because I thought here out a loop field would have the whole thing and actually it does. For example, for Heather's, when, when a index was one, right? The whole a loop field was um, a whole line, right? Now, as it was the whole line, when I go to the second one, a loop field should contain a whole. Right. right? You see what I mean, right? So yeah. you're understanding what I'm looking at. I do. Yeah. I'm expecting. So yeah. now we are here. Yeah. So a loop field go. has a lot of data. Right. That should not be in headers because that we jumped. And now a loop field is that. Yep. And data when it when it gets. Right, it is empty. Look at that. Why is it empty? Okay, we have an array here. Okay, fine. <laughs> right, of course. We have an array. This is what I was expecting at the beginning. Okay, fine. So that's good. And after I have my array, what I'm doing is for each header, so for each of them, yep. I just want to match the data on this guy. Now, the problem with matching it that way would be that I do want to identify one user with all its data, right? So right. that's the part where I'm kind of like, right. now, if I go down here, data one, which is an object, now this guy, data one, should return one, which is right. the ID, right? So that's my ID. Um, I would have it for mentors. I, you see mentors ID said zero. Um, but let me see that now for mentors dot ID, which be data one. So that's his ID. That's for sure. Right now, the problem is all of that. Those are different objects. You see what I mean? So those are. I want mentors to have different objects. So right. what I want to do is kind of like push an object and what I'm going to push onto it would be um, an ID with its data. So the ID would be data one, that's its ID. Now the data, that's the problem. It's going to have um, the header. So that would be a loop field. And a loop field um, should have information, which would be data a index. I think this is what should happen. So first of all, let me grab all these guys. And if you look at it, Let's just look at it and see that I'm getting the correct information. Um, now, a loop field, I want to know what a loop field is, right? And data at index, that's what I want to know. This is the part that is kind of like a little bit complicated because the way how I'm actually unexpected where was that on line 20? Oh. oh, yeah. There we go. So ID, so the first one, which is the data one, that's the ID, right? The field is ID and one, right? So now on the second one, you're gonna have one. So that's the ID of the guy, right? So that's the person. Now his API is gonna have zero because he doesn't have that. So, Right, so this is what I'm actually kind of looking for yeah, now. Look at it, gaming, yep. right? So, yep. so, and that's for the ID one, right? Now, when I finish up this loop and I go to the second guy, right? Now, the second guy, his ID is three, right? 
and now his API. Now I have his information. Yep. Now Good. here in the mentors push, which is the object that I'm looking for. Now, this is the problem. It is not structured correctly. You see what I mean, right? Yeah. Right, so this is the part where I'm actually failing. <laughs> so it is just doing something weird. Now, look at that. I am getting some things. I think ID data one. So I was just, I was just, so hold on. I want to push an object on this guy, right? So let's do this. Now, the object that I want to push would be the ID. So that would be mentors ID one, right? But that's a problem because, and then we have the data A loop field, but I don't see that here. You see that? Yeah. Right. Yeah, why is our header not? showing up in there right now here's the deal so what i would do is just use my a loop field here so a loop field should contain kind of like a, a word only right so i have image oh, there yeah that's and good. the data so this is a little bit better right yeah so we're getting that now again i'm not sure how this would be able how am I going to be able to identify a person with this? You will see what I mean in a second. So uh, again, it says a loop field. What? Ah, that's bad. <laughs> no, it's okay. So um, maybe a reference to it. Double reference is what I'm looking for. Maybe. Um, specifically yeah oh come on really oh man it is grabbing that literally as a loop field that's not what i want i want controls there um Okay, now let's do this. Let's do it how I want it to be accessed. First of all, let's start with what I want, the result that I want. I want to have mentor three dot API. That's what I want to do, right? When I do that, I want to grab and get the ID of that person, right? So that's what I want to do. For the third mentor, right? There are one under right. right. So, what I want to do then is just say mentors, right? Because this is mentors data, right? Mentors. I want to have the ID. his ID yep. data, right? ID, right? Dot. Now, here is the problem, right? Because if I do it with this, I don't think that's how it works. Well, Let's try it anyways. A loop field equals, and then it's going to have the data of the index, right? Right. So this is something that at least it makes sense to, yeah. so that this actually works, right? So let's start with number one, and let's make that an output debug. Right. So this should the mentors data should give me from the mentors object, it is empty, you see that? It doesn't work. So doing it this way and doing that thing does not work out. Do you, because you're nesting it, and I, I know you're creating the object on line 15 with data, right? That creates the array. Data, right. But 
this is where I know when you've when I've nested things before, I've had to declare them, you know, the objects before I shove data into them. And I, I know you're doing it for the mentor one up above, but I haven't done it where the data one is automatically getting created. Like, does that this one here? You mean? Well, I, I know one? you're doing it on fifteen. But mm -hmm. do we need to declare data even ahead of time? Like if you were to declare data as an object up after line eight? No. So the problem is that uh, the, the reason why I know it's showing up is that the data is showing up, right? So okay. that's working. But mentors itself, it does not show anything up. So data here is declared correctly. So data is working fine. Mentors is the one that I'm actually kind of not declaring correctly. And it is not that I'm not declaring it correctly. It's just the fact, not the way how I'm there. doing here, right? Yeah. So the way how I'm doing this, right. it's not working out. Now, I know that if I remove this field here, see that, well, this one should work. So, so I see, the, and I just realized this is why I'm, I mean, right I, there it is. About, that? But the um, I usually use a for a for loop here when I'm nesting the stuff, and that's why I'm not used to using the a loop field. Um, not that it matters, but I'm just saying that that's why I'm like, why don't, why am I, why is this so foreign to me? Because I've done this. Right. Um, but yeah. That's so the things that you're, you use a for loop instead of a parse? Yeah, I do normally. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't yeah. matter. I'm not saying you need right. to do that. But I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm, it's I, the same. That's why I was. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. good. Now the question would be, so look at it right now. It works because I have an array like this because it is an array. Now the question would be, why can't I put two arrays like a second um this is the this is the part that i'm kind of like right. not used to doing this um i want to add a second dimension to this array right. but i don't know how i i could declare that when i'm well, creating the object and so that's, that's the point but uh, well that and that was what i was bringing up earlier was when when i've done this i you declare the first one but then you have to declare the other one you know also uh -huh. right so I, shove it in Right, so what I'm gonna do then, okay, I get it. So in this case, mentors, and I thought that I could do it um, dynamically. Uh, so that would be like data 12, one. So that would be that. And uh, hold on, a loop field. Hmm. Right, so this is what we're gonna be doing. That uh, This is for declaring it. And then we're gonna shove the data into it. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, I'm, I, it's, it's pretty close to it, I think. <laughs> right. So, so, so that's what, but that's the, that's exactly the part that is missed. That's the part that is actually it's failing for me. Give it a try. So, so when I, so, so when I was doing it a few moments ago, if I go backward, you will see that that's exactly what I was doing. So I was kind of trying to declare that at the yeah, yeah 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 right so i'm trying to do that right and so so you and i are thinking on the same line so yeah. i'm just declaring a new yeah, guy right but for some reason as i declared it up up here like this it doesn't work right now let me go ahead and check on something what if i do that um now my global thing for my mentor is undefined Oh, so that doesn't work out. You are thinking exactly the same way as I was thinking. So the logic that I was following is kind of like the most, um, and I think, and I think, say for example, if I have this up and I add this manually, say this, let's try this. And I just had this data there. I think, that should work out. So let me see. Oh, no, it doesn't. Because, yeah. Yeah, and, and this is, I'm pretty sure the same thing I've run into before is like, no. you gotta no, declare the other one first. No, but this one sh should work. Hold on, let me see. But test wasn't a thing before. But the thing is that, okay, hold on. Let me show you what I mean. Because it does create the variables for you. Um, for example, if you have mentors, right? Yeah. And you don't, you don't, that actually work out. So 
for me, you see that? Sure. Because you're you're so, so when when I when I created the object here, right? When I created the object here, it automatically. Um, but there you're assigning that. it literally right there. Right. That's right. what I'm doing. Before you, it wasn't you know it wasn't a thing in the the last thing you did. Okay. Well, that's the thing. I'm actually assigning it right here. Look, I'm just doing this. So I'm expect I'm assigning that right there. I'm, I'm assigning it. It didn't exist. Yeah, I'm trying to make one, it. Now the one is something different, and that's where it's... Okay. Messed. Oh, I understand what you're saying now. So, for example, but I would have to do that for each and every single one of them. Right. So, yes. Okay, so here's the deal. Right. Now here's the deal. We have our object here. So that creates the one. So that actually works. Now, for each guy, so for example... Yeah, for we got to create mentors, that. Yes. Or we got it now. A, so look field. Oh, well, no. Oh. This would be the um, data I, I, one. I would have to actually create an object first. No. And then. What, what I was thinking was what you need to do on line 20 isn't that. It's to create the, uh, the uh, use the header, use the, uh, you know how we're using API earlier as an example. Um, we got to create that object first and then shove it in. Let me see, hold on. And, and for those so, of you- So line, line 20, you say? You wanted to, on line 20, you wanted to do what? But you're, well, you're, you're working with the data and mentors. I'm talking about, we should, we need to create the sub object that we're gonna shove into it. I think line 20 does that sub object now. That's what I'm thinking. So the first line eight creates the first object that is for that one. You're creating a blank thing. Right, right. I'm creating a blank thing right now. Yeah, that's not what I was talking about. Let's go ahead and finish what you're doing and we'll see. Right. Okay. So now mentors data has an object with ID one. Now that object with ID one should have more objects. That's what I'm actually kind of expecting, but it doesn't. Mentors. One, exactly, it is an object. I know that it is an object now. So one is an object, but that would miss the point of what I'm trying to do though. Um, so that's for one, okay. So number one is object, okay. Now I want that object to have some information on it. But that's not what it does. So, what I was saying is on line 20, mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. using the mentors data one, it I think it should be the A loop field colon equals, and you're basically creating an object for whatever the header is. Then, yeah. Yeah, then no, we no, shove yeah. in, but not under mentors, not under mentors, all on its own. All on its own. Yeah. Let's go and try that. Um, how would we call this? Let's say object, right? So object, a loop field. No, no, the A loop field would be the object. A loop field would be the object. Right. Um, you cannot write to A loop field. Well, I, I, like I said, I don't use this. Okay, no, let, let's try it. Let's try it your way. Now, I know that I'm actually close to it. The problem is, <sighs> You see this data one here, it matches my ID. So that grabs a person. Now I want to grab all the data and match it to that one person, right? That's the only thing that I'm trying to do. Now, usually when you define something like this, it gets defined automatically. But in this case, it looks like I have to do it manually. That's the only thing. Now, um, one way of doing this would be like dot maybe a loop field. That is something that I have never used before. When I use the dot there, mm -hmm. I cannot use an a loop field as a as a 
as a variable. Uh, so I don't think so. I don't think that works out. That's what I'm actually kind of looking for. So let me do the following. Hold on. Okay, so we, we did a little pause there. Uh, Isaiah, why don't you explain what, what we finally figured out? Yeah, the problem was that, and this is the problem, that's the reason why you actually put your objectives before you start coding. Because when you concentrate on coding, you actually kind of forget little details like you are inside a loop. And whatever we were trying to do, we were doing it inside the loop and it was actually kind of replacing the data over and over again. So um, we were actually on the right track. We were doing exactly what we were supposed to do. And mainly what happens is that for the managers, we actually declare the object first. Then for each um, ID that we want, we want to declare an object. Right. And then we're going to show information to that object. But the problem was that we were declaring that data inside the loop. I was actually kind of like, I forgot about the loop. <laughs> I was just declaring stuff and that. And it was like, I don't see the data. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what is working. But the problem is that this line was outside of, well, it was inside the loop. Right. So now when we run it and we go ahead and take a look at the data now, so what we're looking for is the mentors object, right? So this is what we are actually kind of expecting to see grow. Um, I create a mentor with a with a specific ID. In this case, the ID is number one. Um, and for the ID number one, I'm going to save each of the header files here, which was um, these are the guys for the API, the controls, the DOM, right? For each of them. And I'm, for each of them, I just want to save the data for them, right? When I do that, here my object creates the 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 whole information just for that particular person which i could access with their id so id one would give me the api for that particular person only right, right. so right. i could just do that and i could also just jump the id so i have in the headers the id i could just remove it because it would be duplicated but i don't care right now so that would be go good and now as you can see, we have the object number one, which is a guy, and the object number three, which is his ID as well, um, is gonna have his own data. So right now, for each of the participants, I'm gonna have an object right. that has the data in the way that I'm actually looking for. Right. So I would do exactly the same for right. the mentees, right? So I just have to duplicate this guy off, um, but instead of raw mentors, I'm gonna have raw mentees. Good. And don't forget to declare that. Right. So now mentors would be mentees, right? So this is going to be like this. Um, and here where I have mentors, I'm going to change it to mentees, right? That should be the same for both. Mm -hmm. So this would be the object for mentees. Um, let me remove that and just go here. So now, global for mentors, I have my whole thing, but there's a blank there. I think that was because the last one was a blank. I'm going to fix that later on. And for mentees, the same thing should happen. There it is. So everything is going to show up the same. But for the mentees, I could just pause here. Sorry, let's go ahead and put it there. Run it. I just want to make sure. Okay, so um, for now, I wanted to break here and just take a look at my arrays. So for mentors, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. For mentees, I have about 15, right? So that would be all. Now, um, that is great. 
grabbing the data correctly. Now, for the matchup, I just want to match up two IDs, right? So um, match would be an object as well. And for the match, um, let me see what I want. I want the ID for the mentor and the ID for the mentee, right? So, um, right, I'm gonna do the same. Um, later on, let me see how I want it to look, like match, if I want mentor one, it should actually bring back the information for the mentee he's in and for match mentee one, that should bring the information for the mentor that has him, right? So again, um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna say mentor, it is an object and mentee, it is an object as well. So I could actually just push that into them, right? We're gonna say, we're gonna take a look at that later on, right? Now, here's the deal. Um, we're gonna take one mentor. So now this is the part where I would just go ahead and go for a for loop because I use for loops, especially when they are objects, right? If it is just text that is separated by tabs or something like that, then I do not, um, um, I do not, uh, use a for loop for it, even though I think it is possible, right? <laughs> but I would use ob um, objects just for that. I need my index, that's usually, I name it either I or index, um, then the name of the object. In this case, I'm gonna be uh, going for mentor. So I'm, mentors is in plural, I have many of them, mentor is just one. So I, I make it very easy for me to just remember that I'm actually just working with one or you know, so for mentoring mentors, right? So for each one of them, I'm gonna do something. So the mentor is gonna have, um, so now we have to compare with the mentees, right? So I have one mentor and then I'm gonna loop over the mentees. So right. for index again, mentee, mentees, right? So that's basically, I have two for loops. Now, this variable will always refer to the mentor. This will always refer to the mentee. Um, and um, what we're gonna do in this case is, we're gonna have the loop for the mentor at the top. What I want to compare is each of their headers. Now the headers are the same for both of them, right? Remember that the data has the same headers, right? The value for the headers, but yeah. Right, so we could actually just loop parse the headers and they are on tabs. So I could use that just very easily because that way now I know that I'm using specifically the same headers for, for both of them. Now, um, the comparison is gonna be if mentor, now the header is gonna be an a loop field. So that's gonna be API, for example. It's gonna bring me back some data. So now, hold on. The mentor that I'm, so that's gonna come with a specific guy, right? Now he's a loop field. Now I'm not sure if that's how it works there because the object for the mentor, um, the object for the mentor actually starts with the ID of the mentor, right? So the mentor is gonna have its own ID, which is gonna be I in this case. I think that's the one. No, but that's the I, I want that's the key, yeah. Right, so this is the one for mentor. I was gonna ask you, didn't, don't you wanna have those different names? Um, right, yeah. Sometimes I don't use the index for anything, yeah, right? right? So for that way, 
I, I don't use it. But as soon as I figure out that I need it, yes, they need to actually. Which is also it. why I use a for loop a lot is that, you know, I can easily control that and not have to yeah. have, right. you know, set a new variable if I'm doing something for the for, you know, the, uh, the, a, the a index value. Right. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's true. You already have the, the variable set up for you. Right. It's going to be the same for the main team. And in this case would be um, the same. So hold on. Right, yeah. So the I mean team and the A loop field. Right, so this is something. Now, I'm just doing the output debug just to make sure that I I just, I'm just going to check this manually in a second. Go ahead. See, I, I don't, I don't think we have to do a comparison like that, right? We can access them directly. Um, you know, we don't have to loop over the second one. We can call it directly. Anyway, go keep going where you're going, but I, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so, so what you're saying is like, I just get the, um, so let me see something. Let me go ahead and verify something here. Because what I want to know is this. So a loop field would be ID, right? So that's ID for each of them. The mentor is going to be one. But this IMNT is going to change faster than the mentor. Now, you say that you want to access it directly, but can you access the data for each mentee at the different rate from the mentor? That would be the question. We will see. I, I, I will check on that in a second. Now. All, those two guys seem to be the same. So the ID and the ID, that is gonna be the same because they're both one. So it just did that. But for some other cases, like for example, the API for this one and the API for that one might be different. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the mentee, the API is one. And for the mentor is zero. So that doesn't match and that should not show up so that should actually jump now it says yes which shouldn't now you know what i'm gonna do let's go ahead and output this guy and see what we're looking at let's see what we're looking at so for this case Oh, they're coming off as empty. That's why. <laughs> That's the reason why. Well, you know what? Uh, not that this is the case, but there was that blank one we didn't. We need to go back and take care of for the mentor. By the way, uh, for for each of them, we should say if the if the rows blank, don't don't process it. Okay, right. no, but I, I I'm I expecting the blank uh, right. So no, 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 but I'm expecting the blank to be kind of like um um on a different. I, I, okay. I know that's not the issue here, but we, we do want to take care of it. Right, we, we will, right. Yeah. Now, this guy here, this is the funny thing. This guy here, I am supposed to get, um, for example, if I want the API, I'm supposed to get a zero or a one on there. And that is coming out black. Now, hold on. This is a mentor. Mentor. The I mentor would be the index. That's number one. Oh, hold on. Okay, well, that might not be what I want later on, but okay. And mentor object. Oh, right. So I don't need this guy here. I get it. That's what happens. Because I'm accessing a specific object in here. So now this is coming as zero. That's what happened. So I understand that now. Fine. Now. So these two guys, right, there we go. So the API is zero, Chrome is zero, right? So I don't have to specify the 
And this is for the mentee. So the information for each of them. Now, when I do this, both of them are one, right? So that matched. The second one will not match. The third. So this thing is only showing me where they match. Now, I don't want to match zeros. I just want to match right. the, the, right. the, yeah. right. So I just want to match, and I see that they match more in the things that they do not learn than the one that, so basically I just want to do that. Now, let's go ahead and think about what you were actually kind of like thinking of, so. No, it's okay. I, I looked at, I was, I forgot that, I forgot how you were looping over the headers on each one. You're not compare, anyway, I thought you were comparing one person's headers to to find the other person's header and then see if they match. But you, you're nest, you've nested it in there, so never mind. I, I get it. What you're doing, right? So now the thing is, now that I have that, um, you see, I don't I don't need the 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 index any longer. You see that? So I don't need the index now for this mentee. So let me see something. Right, so after I do the headers, right? Now, the other thing that I do want to do is, if these two guys, so let me go ahead and drop them. I just want to put this on person and then go and, and. so, if this guy is true and this guy is true and those guys match, then I want you to tell me that they match. Now I'm, I have no idea what the world you're doing. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so for this whole thing to be true, there are three conditions that must be true. Okay. The first one is that the mentor A loop field should contain a one. Okay. Or, or contain something. Right, so, so this mentor thing should contain a one. And this mentee thing should also contain a one. Those two things must be true. That's the reason why I need the and, right? And even if those two things are true, they both need to be the same. So both of them are one. Now, I think I could dispense on these guys. So I could just remove this to this, this um, question here. Because if the mentor is a one and the mentee is a one on that topic, they both matched. If not, then they didn't. You see what I mean? You will see matched on then a loop field. You will see what I mean right now. They matched on the ID because the mentor one and the, I, the mentee one, they matched. Now, hold on, quick question. The, the ID one for this guy, oh, so that's the same guy, right? Yeah, we can have the same, yeah. Some people right, sign so, up, so, right. So they sign up for ID, for yeah. the same ID. Now I could, but, and actually again, but I see them both, like the number four is there as well. Yeah, but not right, so five, six or seven or nine. Do you, so if, if they have the same ID, I could just go ahead and dismiss them. You can if you want, yeah. Right, we will do that. So we, we don't have to actually compare that guy because he's himself. Right, right so um, we're gonna do that, but they match on ID. So if they match on ID, um, we could just dismiss that. And in any case, if I just continue, let me make a break on the output debug. Now, they matched on ID again. That was the other guy, right? Let me see what else. Now here, where are you guys going to do? Oh, that is interesting. They're not matching on anything else, but. Well, remember the first one was only uh, had gaming, I think. I'm sorry? First mentor only had gaming, so he's not going to. Right, know. but the mentee should have matched. So those two guys, so the, the gaming for the mentor were. And the game, oh no, they, he didn't match. Oh, right, we talked about that, right? right? There's only one match or two matches. And for the three, right, so now, um, where are we on the I mentor? Okay, so the I1, I'm actually matching it. Oh, that shouldn't, 
be right. It matched the ID four times. With whom? Number five, the ID should be different there. Oh, I know what it's doing. But hold on, mentor ID should bring you a number, right? So hold on, mentor. Oh, well, there it is. Metro right. ID on, yeah. Right, so that, that should actually bring me a, hold on. Let's go ahead and take this and just wrap this up to see what exactly is matching the window ID. So here we go. Um, we have our output debug. So one and one, that's the ID, right? So I got that. Now, so long as I continue, one and three. Oh, okay, so yeah, I know. So what the first uh, the first check that I was making should stay there, which is that. Those two guys must be exactly the same. So they're matching on the ID supposedly because the ID has a number, it's not empty. But I, I'm not only want to match them if they're empty, I also want to match, I only want to match them if they're actually exactly the same. So in this case, the same ID, right? So the same ID, good. Now, the next time that it matches should be on gaming. Now, that was for one and one, but hold on, why? Match. They shouldn't match, right? So the mentee and the mentor for gaming should have different things. So I have the mentee here, gaming one. That's for the mentee. That's weird. Yeah, it shouldn't. That's not. But what ID is that? So the ID, right. hold on. So that's the ID. 24. 24. Now we're talking about. So the ID. Um, And let's go ahead and do that. So for now we need the IDs that's mentor ID yeah that will help and mentee oh mentee ID so now we'll go right and see what's going on so so for for this this is the same guy that right. I should have match for the ID I, I'm expecting a match okay fine now the next time I'm expecting a match for gaming for one and 24, you see that? Yep. So now we're talking about, now we're matching them up. And for gaming also for one and 28. So you see, he matched two people there. And I think those are the only two that he matches, right? Now, controls four, three and one. You see now that the third one and the first one, third they mentor, match. Right, matches the first mentee on control. Right, exactly. So now these two guys, this one and one is just, I don't need it right now. Um, yeah, so this is the value of it. I don't, I don't care about the value itself right now. I just want to know the topic where they matched, right? So I just want to know the topic where they matched on ID for these two guys, gaming for one and 24, gaming for one and 28, controls for three and one. So now we're getting our matches, right? So three and one. Now here's the deal. Now you see the three and one match in a lot of them, right? So that's exactly what we're looking for. How we many matches? We storing that, right. The right, count. so this is the part, how many, how many matches we have for each of them. Now, this is the part where the match objects come into place, I think. Um, so the matchup, now th this, this, this matchup would be like the whole result. This is the, the last thing I want to use, but I want to keep track of how many times a person yeah. or one of them matched the same what, guy. What I would so, consider doing is shoving, and we just pick one, right? Shoving the men mentors, shoving a new, Pairing in there, it'd be the ID of the mentee and the count of matches. Does that make sense? So, so hold on. So that's for the mentor thing. Yeah. Well, so let's we, go ahead. And, right, because we could do it either way, right? But right, right, right. Of course. Um, now, 
And the reason why I say that, because this might change your opinion of it, is what we want to, what I would want to be able to do is to easily use the Mac, is it Max Index, I think, to get the highest right, value, yeah. like, and, and pull back who is that ID, right? That That's how I'd want to be able to, instead so of having to count and compare, right? It, it just right. so, automatic. Now, so what you're suggesting is using Mentor, right? No, so this is my Mentor, and I have my, that object has its own things here. So that's my object of mentor, right? So it yeah. has its data itself. Now I want to add a new thing on it. Right. That would be, I don't know, like um the mentee that we're matching maybe. Well it'll and be the, and how many times we match them. That's right. Yeah. The ID of the mentee and how right. many so let's see um ID of the mentee, right? But we so, want to nest it under something, right? Because we want to be able to get the max score. Match so match, and we're gonna to convert this to an object again. Now, and this, we're gonna not fail on the same error yeah, right. as before, yeah. right? So we're gonna go ahead and match okay, that move here, it. right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is my match object, <laughs> mentor.match. So this is my match. And now for each of them, I want to grab an ID of the mentee, mentee right. yeah. ID, right? Yeah. So that's Score the guy. Yeah. And how many times we match on a topic. Right. Right. So that's another issue because we have to have that as an object itself. Remember that? Yeah. So the match has this guy. Now the match team would be. Well, maybe we would do that outside of it after yeah, it. Yeah, here. If the count. Right here. And then um, the mentee ID. So that guy is also an object. Because there, why well, don't know if we? Oh, no. So the thing is that I want to match the no, I... topic we're matching on. Right? Oh, so I was just going to get the count, the total count. That's all. Because that's all. Um. So it doesn't matter. Oh, so we don't care about the topic then. So right. Oh, okay. No. In that case, then hold on. Yeah. Then in that case, we don't need this. Um. We could just go ahead and add the count. So that would be like, if it then plus one. So that right. would be like right. um, plus equals one. That should be a zero before. If you don't do that, it will not work. You actually have to declare that as a yeah. counter, right? So yeah. if you don't do gonna, that- Is that when you're gonna work. add the stuff? Is that what- Right, when, when you do this what kind you, of adding, right? Yeah. When you do this, this kind of plus equal things, you do have to um, put it like that. I think you could actually do it with a plus plus without having to declare it. Yeah, I, I know that. But the plus equal plus equal is a kind of like a little bit more specific of what I want to do. Yeah. And it's more clear what I'm doing. So I will have the match for that ID, for that mentee, right? And for that mentee, so ID 10 is going to have a number in there, which is how many times we matched, right? If that's true, let's go ahead and run it. So I do have this mentor. Um, I have a match array there. And for the ID one, it has matched once, right? So why did it match once off of the ID, right? Now for this time, now we have, hold on. Yeah, so for the other IDs, it hasn't matched at all. Now for the 24, yeah, 20 it matched 28. once, right? So that's for gaming. Yeah. And that's the thing, you say that you don't care about the topic, but maybe we do care in the end. So for one and 28, so for 24 and for 28, it matched once, right? So that's okay. Now, next time we match, that would be for number three. So now we go for mentor match. Match one. Hold on. Right. Oh yeah. So we're matching the number the, the one, right? So that we're matching him and we have matched him twice. Um in the end we matched him go two for six times. So for number one, we have six matches, right? You see that? Run. So that is working. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're almost working out now. The problem is that we are actually kind of like, right, no, that's okay. In the end, when I finish up on this whole thing, so this whole loop is done. Um, we break about here. That would give me, right. Um, in the end, it would give me, this is the thing that we're gonna go ahead and kind of like match and stuff, right? So now for our mentor, we had our match and the match would be for that guy six times for this one and so on. So, okay. Now, now that we have the times they match, in the end, we could just grab the max index, right? To figure out which one he matched the most, right? Is that what we're looking for? Uh, right, right. So and this we, is why our... I said, I don't, we don't care actually what they matched on. It's just the total, which one had the most matches, that's who they could assign to. That's the, the matchup we would make. So to speak. Okay, yeah, I lost internet there. Um, just go ahead and keep going. I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee. Right, no problem. So, what is? It? I think this is not. Yeah, it is. I don't think Max Enders is the one that we're looking for. No, that's not it. No, not, not the Max Index. We're looking for something else. Yeah, because it's across different things, right? Is the problem? No, 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 no. So, so basically, at the max index is just tell, it tells me what the highest number is on the array, but what I'm looking for is the highest value. So, in this case, one, one, one. The highest value would be one, not thirty-one. You see what I mean? Yeah. Well, what what I think we that's why I think what we need to do is to actually store the highest matches and then the value be the ID. Never mind. No. I understand what you're saying, but is how do we yeah. So now I do have the information for this guy. So for the first guy for the first mentor. We, and we can just I do logic know, there. Right. yeah. Let's just I'm use sorry? logic and say, hey, if this new value, if this new count is higher than the last one, then we store the ID. Does that make sense? I think that takes care of it. No, I'm not understanding what you're doing. So we, we, we end up only storing, we only ever store one ID for the for the given mentor, right? The very beginning, we store the first one because that's what it is. And then every time we process through it, we look and compare the new count, the new count for the new mentee to the value we had before. And if that new value is higher, we then store the ID of the new person. Okay, so what we do is, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we go like um, checking on it, like for example, so let me go ahead and do this. So we are parsing the headers, this for each of the topics. Now, I am actually matching the mentee ID. So that's this number in here is the ID. 
And each of those guys is kind of how many times we matched. Now, in the end, I want to save but, uh, this. Stop right, stop right there. So what I was saying, maybe it wasn't quite clear, is instead of where the ID is being stored, Hold on, but that's the question. What are you talking about the ID being stored? Right right where you're to the right of that. Here on the match? Right. To the right. So this right this guy. Well, so that, this. you're right. The whole thing, instead of storing that, there we actually store, we, we, have, we keep the count of the matches and we set the value of it to be the ID. Okay, so we could do this. Um, plus equals one. And then the... Uh, that thing is going to be changing, and then um, main TID. This is what you're kind of like thinking about. Now, hold on. Well, it doesn't have to be done inside the loop. It's done outside the loop. Increment your counting inside it, but only store it once when we're done with that person. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. So basically, so hold on. So this is the match count plus plus. I think this is what, what we were talking about, or plus yeah. equals one, right? So now match count should start at zero. Let's do it like that just to make sure. Right. Right. So now at the end, after we do this right. matching and we go out of the loop, right? So we finished. Now this match count is going to be our key. And this is going to be our value. This is what you're trying to say, right? Yeah. Now, this, when I hit the max index, would be actually the match count. Right. The, 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 the biggest count. So that let, let's, let's test that out. Well, but I thought we'd have to do some logic to say only... Oh, this is going to be this is going to be re, this is going to be reset for the next mentee. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I was 56 that that I thought this here. Yeah. What would be the logic? The logic would be like the mentee ID. I'm going to say that on the on the one that actually matches the most, right? Well, I, I thought we'd have to store the value first, and then every time we're done, do a comparison and say that new count. If the new count's higher than the, the, the value there, then we store the mentee ID. Otherwise, we don't want to store it. Um, so above that line. Above this one. Yeah, we would we would first access it and you know say, hey, is the match count higher or lower than what you have in uh in the, the mentor match match count value? Does that make sense? Okay, so because the second time through it, we're going to have the first time we're just setting it right, but the second time through it, we need to compare. Hey, is this new match count value, which now represents the next person, is that above what we've stored? I'm sorry, the things that I just saw that you know it is 11:51, and I had a call with John. Up the oh, okay. Well, hold on. Let me has a, no, no, no. So I, I just that's going to happen. This is the problem. As this is a loop that is for each mentee, right. when we finish with that, the next mentee, um, the match count is not going to have anything to do with the previous one. It's going to start at zero again. Right, which is exactly what I want. Hmm. Right. I think that's not what you want. No, <laughs> it's absolutely what I want. want. Let's see. Hold on. Let's I see want the match count to start over. For that person, let's count how many there are that are matches. Right. You know, so it's, let, let me, I'm going to go through it. Right. right? So right. now, right now, right now, we should have a one in here. And this is going to be empty, right? Because there is no mentor yeah, match, right. match count. So that is going to be empty. Mentor match. There is nothing in there. So that should actually save some information. Now, what that did is that it grabbed the first guy. So that's the mentee. No, sorry. The match, the match count is going to be one because that's the first time he matched. And um, the mentee is number one, right? So now when I continue going, and this time it's gonna check again, the match count is zero, this is gonna be jumped. Now zero was more than this guy. This is something that I'm not sure why. Oh, 
No, but zero is not more than that. What? Where am I right now? So for zero, it asks for the ID number three. So I'm not sure what that means. So let's see. Right, it actually played with that one. Right, right. Now it hasn't matched. There, I think there would match. Now here, for number three, so two matches for number three, six matches for number one, that's not true. Right. You see what I mean? I, I don't think that's the idea. I don't know why that'd still be even stored though. I'm sorry? How is that even still stored? How do you still have a previous? A previous what? A previous one for the other person. Or that's that... the thing. So this is the thing. Now, as I'm accessing the mentor, now the mentor is an object that is only changed every time the mentor changes. So this is an object that is fairly static for each mentee, right? Absolutely, right. Right, so that's okay. <clears throat> now, for this guy, when I add information on that, it's gonna stay there until the next loop, right? Fine, that's good. It is gonna go from each mentee, but the information is just gonna change when we change the mentor. So that's good. That's exactly what we want. Right. Now, the match count here, it says six. How many, it, it matched on six topics. That's what I understand, right? Yeah, that's why I'm right. So it matched six times for a specific mentee. That's the thing. Here, I'm matching how many counts I have, and I'm comparing it just to the highest match that I have here, I think. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't understand how you have more than one match. I didn't want to have a, an array there. That should just be a, a score. Oh, no, because we, a score with whom? From the, who, from the, la, from the, high, the very first time, it's, it's you know the first one. Mm -hmm. Every time, it should just be the highest number of matches we've had so far. It shouldn't be an array. It's just a one value that's set and that's it. It's not an array. Okay, in that case, I do not want to do it inside the mentee. And that's something that I'm not understanding. So, so this is the thing. Not inside because, the mentee, it's after the right. mentee, but okay. before the next person. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now this okay. thing, <laughs> right. So let's see, because the, the problem is that will bring me that's it. Right. Now here, now we start with a new mentor, right? Now let's go ahead and take a look at that last mentor. The last mentor, the match, where is it? I did not see that mentor match. So hold on. I haven't even assigned that yet. Where's my match? Oh. Right. Now let's go. Oh. It's not doing what you think is done. Right. And then, why, why did you delete the object right away? I'm not sure how that is. Why? I'll be right back. Right.
Now this here, just mentor match, match count is zero. This is my match count, mentor match, match count, feed and empty. Now I, I understand what is going on. So that's the thing. I cannot save that menti ID outside of this loop. So um, let's go ahead and get um, uh, ID. So ID to menti ID there. I'm going to save that here. So maybe that might help me out a little bit. So mentor match. But I should have that there. What? There it is. Oh, well, now. Right. Now the ID might be what? Do you say no? That shouldn't be no. That should what? Where's Menti? Menti object has an ID of blank. Why? Menti, Menti. So we have Menti here, which is going to be here, right? So I have my Menti, and it has an ID of one, right? Now my menti ID says menti ID is equal to one. This should have oh, one. Okay, I get it. I know what it's going on. So the last one, the last one is empty. And this, and this is the problem. So when I come out of this guy, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and um Yeah, so the problem is this guy's here. That's what happens. Now, what happens is when I reach this point, ID should have a number there, right? But that's the last mentee. And this thing is only going to save the last mentee. And that's not what I want. Um, maybe what I want to do is add this ID only when, the, when it is matching. That's going to do several matches. I, I, I don't see the logic of putting this outside with the mentor thing. Um, maybe it can be within. I mean, it, 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 no, but that's the problem. When when it is within, the the, the logic is completely different. Now this is twenty eight, and twenty eight is not the. I don't I don't know if that's the the. Now what we could do is save the latest match. So hold on, let me see something. So we're going with each of the mentees. Now we're matching every single time. We count every time we match. And that every time I match, I save the idea of that person, but I want the highest match, right? So when we finish parsing the headers, I want to get the match count into a variable, which is the old match count. This is my oldest. Now, if my current match count is higher than my oldest count, right? I want to save the ID of that person. That's what I'm kind of like thinking of, right? That makes a little bit more sense. 
So we just count how many times they match, right? We compare my current count with the previous one. And if my current count, which means I match with a specific mentee more than another one, then I would actually add it into, I would add that ID, but that creates a problem because I'm just comparing the last two. I'm not comparing the highest number. You see what I mean? So I have to save it for each mentee, how many times I match for each mentee and then say, okay, from all of them, which is the higher, highest? You see what I mean? Thinking it through now, yeah. It's the whole bubble up kind of thing, approach, right? It's, you can't just do the one to one comparison. No, I, I, can, I cannot do just one comparison. That's the yeah. reason why I was having this whole thing, right? So I was, yeah. I was just going ahead and um, whenever I was matching, right? So whenever I was matching, I was kind of like saving that into that particular mentors so for the account. I don't I was think just that, I was just through one matches, right? And that's ID one, right? That guy's there. The next time through zero matches, okay, it's still one. The next time through there were four matches, and that's ID three. He gets stored. The next time through, there's zero matches. Okay, it doesn't. I don't see a problem with that. It's not going to ever. You'll end up with the person that had the highest matches. Really? Right? Well, I mean, I'm just trying no, to. No, but that's there. that's the, that's the problem. So sometimes, so say for example, um, the, the the way how I'm actually looking at it is, say that my previous count. So let me see. So. At one point, I matched a guy who matched five times, and I saved that ID, right? Now, now I have a person who matched seven times. That is gonna replace the ID of the previous one, right? Is that what it's gonna do? So I'm just gonna be matching the highest ID, right? Let's actually test it because I haven't, I just, I was just, I just thought about it like in a, in a, yeah. Right. So right now, if I go to that manager, right, and I go to the manage, I would get zero, which is what? Why would I get zero there? Well, the first guy doesn't match the first mentee. Mentor, yeah, mentee. Right. Something is failing right now. So that didn't save it, right? So now if I go to map, we have our, our uh, what, mentor. So we're looking for the mentor, we're looking for the match. And it hasn't saved anything yet because there is something, right? So, right, so I want to do, so it never actually matched. So hold on, where are we right now? We are on the main, uh, the mentee number, where is his ID? Four. So I do know that some of them do match. So hold on, let me see this, I have zero. Yeah. yeah, he cannot join right now. So he's going to a medical one. So here's, so now here's the deal. This is the part where I'm, and it is happening as I was expecting. This thing is actually not working out because, um, now, now you have a, oh, oh, yeah. 
So this should only happen when something matches, right? So let's capture the matches. Let's capture the matches. So it matched once, right? So one and one, right? The ID matched. This should actually, oh, I thought that this was gonna, no, they are the same, so that should not work, right? Fine. Oh, right, it doesn't update, yeah. Right, so now at this point, this was zero, um, so there was no match. I want to stop here. I just want to stop on the next output debug. This one actually, and that's the thing, it just jumped. Oh, because this is a part. So now I match one and 24, right? So I, I match this guy. So I have one match, right? And then you see this match one and 24 is gonna, is gonna replace. So now that I match them, I am not saving the match count right there. That's a problem. So, because now it's going to get replaced by this other guy, the one in 28, right? So now it's replaced and the count is wrong because, um, so let me see, maybe this, all this thing must it's be- It's only matched on one. I don't think it's- Right, but the problem is I'm missing information. That's the problem. So let me try it again. So now, let me go ahead and do this. Um, right, I need to know if this is matching. Right, it never matches. Why? They are the same, one and one. So that was once, and I don't want to match the same. Now, these two, one and zero. Oh no, one one again. Oh no, this doesn't, that doesn't belong there. That's the problem. I cannot keep that count in there and do the same thing again. So, so this for the headers, the match count. Let me just one second. This should be out there. Hmm. No. Right, so we match that guy. It doesn't match for a lot of people, right? So now it matched here. Now here's the deal. So the match happened and that's not gonna actually be saved. And I want it to be safe. I want to match this guy. At at least I want it to match that one. So that one well, I want to match the ID, right? So I need the ID for the twenty-four. Right. But my logic right now, what it's doing is, it's not saving that ID. Is oh, hold on. Yeah, I do have it. I do have an ID now. Okay. So I have the ID twenty-four. This is my highest match right now. Yeah. The 28 will match, but it shouldn't replace it because it's not greater than. So let me see. So I, again, I still have a 24 so I can be there. I haven't seen the match yet. So right. let's go ahead and now for my next output, I did match that, but the ID should still be, oh, you see. So now why did it do that? One is more than zero. Why is old match zero? That's, oh, maybe because the match count was zero. No. Yeah, the, the match count became zero when we started with a different mentee. That's what happens. So maybe the match count should not switch on every mentee. Well, it, you're actually, you should, I don't think you're supposed to be comparing it to old match count. You need to compare it to the stored value. We need to store that value outside of the loop. Out of which, which I think is this, the, the, that was why I was shoving it into the the mentor object. Is it, it, it which so is, that so that we could actually just match it in here? So we that. can compare it, right? 
we, we got to store it outside of that loop, right? Uh, outside of which loop? Because there's the, two the loops here. Loop. The, the menti loop. The loop. So it, it is outside of the menti. So that is that match count should only be reset when the mentor changes. Is that the question? Okay. Right? Or or when the menti changes. And the match count is actually counting how many times we match with that mentee. So that should change with every single one of the mentees. You see? Yeah, but that's not, but you're using it in a different way. We need to store the total, the highest match count, right? We, we need to store that value to compare it later across mentees. And that's the problem. Okay, so this, so, so hold on, let me see. For the count should be going up all the time. And when do I save the mentee data? So the things when we're done, when we're done looping across the mentee, when we've done all of his, we right. then compare it to the last one, which at the beginning at zero. So we would just store the ID. So, right? so, 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 so this is the thing. So for each mentee, the match count should be zero. And there's another counter that is every time the mentor changes, which is the total match. That should be something totally different. That's what I think. It is, and I, that's what I'm, okay. I'm, I'm saying. So I've been saying that. that's what I was shoving into the mentor object, you know, under that person, just storing it there, right? Okay, so that, let me see. So the total match would be like the total thing at the end. That's the one that I'm going to store, which is at the end of whatever I did with the mentee. Well, let's, see. let's label total match a little more specific. Right. Right. What Highest yeah. match. Okay. Thank you. Right, so that's the highest match. That's something that I need at the end. It's and the this, highest mentor match, or I'm right. sorry, mentees. It's the so, so the highest mentee yeah. match, right? So yeah. now, for the mentee, I keep a local count that every time I match something goes up. Absolutely, right, right. right. So that's, that's okay. Absolutely. And whenever I have when when my match, I just go ahead and do that. That that has nothing to do. I just I just count how many times I match, right? right? But I don't have to do anything else. Right. I just match how many times I want. That at the end is gonna have the highest match for that mentee. That's it. It's gonna be the total. It's gonna be the total. The total for that mentee, for that mentee only, right? right? So now that mentee is gonna have a total of five matches, right? Or a total sure. of three matches. Right. That's what we compare to the highest match to this guy here. So now right. the match count, if it is higher than my highest match only, then I change that ID, right? So I grab that ID and save it. Right. right. Now, after I do that, right. So now let me go ahead and do that. So after I do that, I start with a new MNT. Right. I start my count again. I get how many times it matches and only Put that mentee in there if it is the correct guy. Now, instead of saving this like this, I could just put it here. The match mentor. So this is going to be my mentor match. And um, But it is, it's the highest count, right? I mean, that's- So, 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 so this is the thing. So um, my highest count, the highest match- The highest match, yeah. Is gonna be my mentee. Right. That's it. Right. But that's gonna sometimes change uh, if I do it that way. I just want the highest match as a, a specific value. No, I wanna, yeah. So highest match would be the mentee. So the highest match would be the mentee, yeah. So this would make it so that that's kind of like a static variable that will be swapped off later on. You will see. So I understand. And then outside of here, we were doing something weird that we don't need any longer, right? So now. You're not understanding what I did there, right? You no, know, it's all right. No, I, I, I was understanding where I was going wrong was I was trying to shove the highest match into a count like key, a key. Um, right. 
in but then but then the each system. highest match is going to create a new key right yeah and right. that's what i want to avoid this time in this case i have like a static variable in which i'm just going to have a mentee that will be switched up right. depending on what the highest match is at that right. particular level right so right. the match count is going to be the highest match yep. now highest match is zero right now but i have to update that at some point right right so i haven't updated the highest no, match. You need the logic to it's go back be, yeah Right, so whenever I match a mentee there, I'm going to save my match count into the highest match. Yeah, agreed. Right, so yep. that's only when that happens, then I'm right. going to save that, and that's going to be stored for the next time that we do right. that. Right, yeah. so that should... That should that'll that'll give, us, give us the, the ID at the end that had the most matches right. or tied to the most. Yeah. Now, I do have a small issue here. So now this loop, all of this, so the match count and all of this is on every single iteration. Now, hold on, let's see more. This is gonna be for the A loop field, right? So this is gonna be for the A loop field. For the A loop field, that's for the headers, I'm just gonna count. And after I do that, after I count that, then I do this unconditionally. So that's okay. I take this off. That stays there. And this text actually goes a little bit back. So let's do that. Let's check it. Right. So now I did a match for the first mentee, right? And he has his match count, which right now is just one because he just matched once. Um, Right, that is bigger than the highest match. So this is the first guy, that's himself, right? right. So that is gonna match, it's gonna store him there. And it's gonna say like, um, on what? Oh, sorry. All right, so this is about here. All right, so I'm gonna drop this monster there. So, you are going to tell me that you guys match on ID. And when you do that, what is going to happen is that you're going to have your highest match assigned to that guy, even though it's going to be replaced very quickly later on. So that's going to be mentor, match, highest match. That's the ID of the person. So that's going to be the number one. So that's the first one. Then we match 24, right? Mm -hmm. So 24 got matched. This is now, hold on. The highest match was one, right? So I didn't save 24 there. That shouldn't happen. Yeah, I was, I was right. surprised so, to so, get so, updated. Right. Right. No, no. The thing is that what happens is, as I am using this, I should put more than or equals to. If it is the same, it would be replaced, but that's not what I want. Now, that, the only way to solve that is that if the ID is the same, then just don't do anything. That's what I'm going to do. So, I'm going to do if mentor ID is the same as the mentee ID and just a uh, break of this loop. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to do anything about it. So let me see, break. Um, that is going to break this loop here. So I'm just not going to do the headers. And I'm not even counting that. So that I'm going to do it. Hold on. This break, I'm going to make it so that I don't do anything from here on. So yeah. if the mentor ID, as soon as I find out that they're the same, then just don't do anything, right? right. Now, in this case, now I'm going to start with a three and one. Now, where's the 24? Hold on. I cannot do it there. You want to continue, don't you? You don't want to break on 55. I do want to match 24, actually. 
Right. So there we go. We. It just said, "Hey, the same. Let's stop entirely." Right. And that's not what we wanted. To no, do. no, no. So, so that that would go to the next mentee, but that's not what right. I want. Right. Yeah. Um. But now, one twenty-four. Right. So now, um, would that mean that the highest match has been set? No, it hasn't. Right. So now this part here. I did match one and 24, right? I mean, we're still in set of blue, right? So we're still in set of blue, right? And then that is gonna jump. So that's for the things that we did, right? So now the count, you just match one, highest match is zero. So we're gonna have, have match one there now the mentee is gonna be 24. So that's gonna be, um, we're looking for highest. So I have to actually count up how like this, right, that's. So highest match is, this is the ID that I want. So that's ID one. Now, we have 28, but what happens with 28 is that I don't want it to right. it's not change higher. anything. So it's not higher, it's not gonna change it. Right. And we continue without any cross problems. Now, again, zero is more than that. No, it's not gonna change it. So my best match in the end would be 28 for now we're starting again. Now we are in a different, we're in a different mentor now, right? So let me make this up like this. So now we're in a different mentor for three and one, we had it. Three and one, so we have two count now, right? There we go. Now my match count on that one, it's gonna be six times. It's going to be zero. You know what we need to actually do in that process, which sucks. We need to re remove after that first run through, we need to remove the mentee. Otherwise, we keep comparing him across mentors, but he's out of the loop now. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> that's when we, that's when we, oh, but ha ho we haven't finished with this mentor yet. I thought we finished the first mentor. I thought you were on to the second. I thought you finished. I, yeah, I thought that because of the zero here. So I think, let me see where we are. We're, we're on the third mentor now. Okay. Right. So yeah, we do have to do that. So whenever we um, finish off doing this for loop, now we have to make sure we eliminate the highest mentee. So the highest right. match mentee, that would be or the mentee that I'm gonna delete right. from the other. And, then, and this is the great thing about using an object, right? It'll be easy to actually do that. Because we, we just pop it. Yeah, right, you have that key value, yeah. And we just remove him from the loop. Uh, I'm sorry. From uh, the object. Object, yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, hold on. Um, the way how we're gonna do that is just that we're gonna grab the mentee uh, and we're gonna get the ID that would be the mentor the match sorry match the highest match that's the ID that I'm looking right. for and yeah. that guy I'm just gonna pop it out of the yeah and then he's removed from the equation the right we're gonna see the mentee object yeah right that, that's what we're expecting right so yep. we're gonna double check on that later on now um, break there. So, hold on. Because there's something that is not, I'm not 100% sure that is correct in here. So let's go ahead and predict stuff. So for this guy, there were no matches? Really? Hold on. There were no matches? I thought there was. Where am I right now? So mentee three, mentor one. So 
for the mentor two, so the one and the two, oh, three, this guy, we didn't match anything? Okay. Oh, they will match now. Hold on. They were matching, the, the three and one were matching. There were, oh, here we go, one and 24, right. So one and 24, we have our highest match. This is gonna save 24 into my um, guy here. So that would be uh, highest. Right, so that's my, hold on. Why, why, does, why do I get the number one there? Well, they, they only match on one thing. No, no, that's not what I'm saving. The, what I'm saving is the mentee ID, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I got this 24 here, you see this output debug, the mentee ID is the 24. Yeah. I was expecting a 24 there. But you're looking at the highest match variable, aren't you? You want the object, okay. the mentor's match, highest match. Mentor match oh yeah there we go oh so maybe we should change that name to help us um you know right uh, uh, um, understand that now hold on yeah because this is something else this is right. like the highest match but this is the so men, so mentor mentor matched mentee maybe yeah easy for you to say <laughs> uh uh, mentee there. That's it. There you go. Yeah, that, there you go. That, mentor yeah. dot mentee. So that's right. the mentee that that's goes exactly with exactly what it is. Right. right. So now we have mentor here, which is an object, and I don't want to have this. So this mentor um, dot mentee, I don't want to, I don't need this line any longer. Because the mentor is this object, and I'm just adding a new right to it that's Agreed. okay right so i just have to do that now let's go ahead and do that again right so um let's just jump in when it matches that's it so now 124 now my mentor dot mentee there is my mentee right so 24 that's his id now the next time, hold on, we did kind of like pop him, right? Oh, no, we didn't. Not yet. Because, no, because this is the old name. That's not uh, Right, so the highest match, um, mentee goes as um, mentee. Now that's interesting. I thought that I could. Well, have we actually gotten to it yet? Hold on. Yeah, we have. So mentor, so the mentor dot mentee should contain twenty four, oh, yeah, right? right? So it is there. Right. And after, um, after yeah, yeah. Because as soon as as soon as it gives me this message here, this output deb debug, I know that it's going to do that at some point. So now I know at least for the twenty four. I mean, right. now, right? So I did that. Now we go with the next one, right? There's 28. Hold on. The, now, 24. 24. So, mentee. Let's go to the mentee. Make sure we didn't drop them out. Hold on. I think, uh, no, this is wrong. This is mentees. So, I want to drop uh, them out, Yeah. Right? So, from the other guys. So, right. from here. Yes. I want to grab 24 and pop him out, right? So right. mentor mentee would be 24, right? Yes. Um, but that's going to be from the object that yes. has them all, and it's going right. to pop it out, right? So that's yes. what we are going to do. Good so call. I'm do this. Um, so we have my mentor mentee. So it's mentee is 24. So I already knew that. It's going to keep looking for a better match. But 20, yeah. 28 will not work. It's I not assume. better. So it's not it's not better. So I'm gonna do that. I finished 
And now it's going to try to pop this out, right? So mentees. So now mentees. So now let's go ahead and take a look at mentees. And I have an array here, and 24 should disappear. And it didn't. Oh, open it, make sure it, there's nothing. Oh. No, no, no. It, 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 is, it is there. So now uh, I assume that popping it will do that, right? So let me go ahead and verify that API. Um, I think you can only pop if you push, maybe. Um, let me just make sure of that. Um, well, pop. That's the one that I'm actually remove at. Or remove at, right? Yeah. So if there are no I'll already the elements. Last one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it's remove that. I wasn't thinking about it in this. Right. Awesome. The thing is that it makes more sense if I just talk about that. Like, right. Um, so I could just mentees dot remove that, remove add, and the position is going to be the, the, the hold on, is that, is that right? No, that's not the position, right? That's the thing. I thought the pop would do the, the, the current object. So hold on. Remove now the last array element. If there are otherwise there's a delete. The key that's that looks like that that removes the key value pairs, right? Oh, that's the one that's I'm looking for. It's delete. Yeah. Oh, so pop is just the last one. It doesn't matter which one it is. Remove that if we were remove doing that index, is, it'd be okay. Right. If I know the index, right? Yeah. But we're doing the delete right. one. Okay, now we're talking about because it. it didn't make sense to me. So this part here would be delete. And right. now, now let's try it again. I have actually rarely deleted keys from an object. Whenever I have an object, I have it like. Is so we have twenty four here? Let's go ahead and check. It. So go ahead. No, go. Well. Okay. See, isn't it? Isn't it supposed to be mentees dot delete and then the mentor mentees inside? Oh, the key. Yeah, the key goes there. Not so we're deleting it off the main object. Right, so mentees. Oh, so it would be mentor mentee. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, is, is awesome as they are and even using pop and delete and stuff. I, yeah, I, I don't use them that often. My, my no, we, we, I, I don't delete that from a, from a variable though. Yeah. Uh, so, but in this That's case, we I, do need to do that because right. we, we, we right. want to make sure that yeah, 24 is go. not matched again. Yeah. Right. So that's what we want. So that went out and I do have to, and, and I already matched that mentor. So I want to be the mentor as well, right? Well, we don't have to because we're not looping over him again. Right, okay. Right? And, right. and we want to keep that value, you know, in his object. Now his object, let's see how, yeah, of course. So mentor, the mentor, now a quick question, because I want to save that information for that mentor itself. Now, right? You, so that mentor, which was number one, would have the mentee number 24. Yeah. See that? So or, he's there. Or if we cared to, we could actually create a mentor mentee object, and that would just have the key pairs, right? The This is what I was looking for here on the match here. See that? Yeah. That's what I was thinking yeah, okay. the first time. So right. basically, right. Here, when I matched it here in the mentor mentee yeah. thing, maybe I should just say match equals. So this is my match. Yeah, I'm so with match you. dot met. So hold on. Um, yeah, use it as the array kind of thing. Right. So that's yeah. going to be like the first one would be like any the, ID. thing. Um, hold on now. I, I think. I could match the first one like this, and then dot, and then um, mentor, right? 
And the mentor would be mentor ID, the mentee, mentee would be mentee ID. Now this object up here shouldn't be like this, it would be just an array. And this, instead of that, the match would be either the, this number here, what would that be? Um, actually, see, I, I thought you were just gonna put like the ID there of the mentor and store the uh, value as the mentee ID. Yeah, well, we could do that, right? Because right? it's a simple, this is all that's going in there, right? Is So that, that would be like the mentor thing. It's going to have the mentee, and that's going to be the idea of it, right? This is what you're referring to. Well, I wasn't actually going to name it with dot mentee because it, it's just going to be the... the um, and what do I put? is the mentor ID and the value is the mentee ID. Okay. That right? Is. I mean, because that's all we need, right? It's, I mean, that's all we're getting out okay. of there. Yeah. Now, let me make sure that this object yeah. is, uh, yeah. So, right. the way how we do that, we have the manage. I created that. And yeah, that looks correct. We're going to check on that in a second. So, but and the mentee this. ID, I think that's, you know, what you want. That's the one where you, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, no, we're good. Now, here on my match object, if I go to my match object, I should have the yeah. number one oh. to the 24, right? Oh, wait a so minute. That's it. Oh, it is the one. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Yeah, so, so the first guy is matched to the 24, right? right? So, and not to the 28, because he matched both of them. Agreed. He matched in game. Right. But he didn't do that. And then we deleted that mentee from the list. So we do so hold on. I do not see it. So that's when we do this. Now we delete him. 24 should go away. So uh, yep. Oh in there. Hold on. Where where's your delete statement? It is here. Outside when we, we did it actually. So hold on. So if I'm here, I first match them. I have it matched. Uh, oh, sorry, mentor mentee is not the one that I looked for. So um, I'm looking for the mentee ID. So hold on, that would be match. Oh, right. So this guy should match the mentor ID, right? So I, I could just grab this, right? So this should bring me to 24. Because the mentor ID, that That's mentor is going to right? Yeah. Right. So right now, it should do that. And match mentor mentee should bring 24 there, right? So when I do ahead, go ahead and do the match delete for my mentees, 24 should go yep. away. So it's not there. Right. Yeah. Now my match object contains 1 and 24. So right. we just match them, right? So right. now we have... For the three, so for the three, it matched number one six times, right? So he's going to go ahead and um, for the three, it matched number one. Now let's see what else he does. Now for the three, it matched 19, two, four, six, seven times. So actually, this one is better suited, right? So even though he had the one at the beginning, now it should change to 19. So he's better suited for 19. That's what we're doing, right? Yep. Now, when we finish up here, it seems to be that he matches again somebody else. So eight more than seven. So he matched another person. He matched 28 a little bit better. Yep. Right. So that's what we're doing. And now we finish off. So now we know that he's going to stay with 28. And 28 is going to go out of right. our mentee. Right. Yeah. And that so was the 20, important part, too, is we don't delete them. We're not deleting them too early. Everyone's disappearing. Yeah. <laughs> right. So now we just match two guys. Now if I finish up with this guy, so go ahead and remove this thing. So I know that those things are working fine. Now I'm just going to take a look whenever they match. So I match four with five. 
I matched 10 with 18. I matched 12 with 19. And I matched 26 with one. So remember that number one. So let's go ahead and take a look at that last one. So 26 says he, he wanted to teach some things. And number one said that he wanted to learn as well. So number one is not only a mentor, but he's also a mentee, right? Right. right. So this he's going to be the mentee of 26, yeah. but he's also the mentor of 24. But what's really funny is, you know, in the actual data, I had other things like, you know, languages you speak, times available. And those kind of things, right? And I'm like, oh, my God, how am I going to match up these people? Then I said, what really matters? You know, it's those skills is what really matters, right? Like, but yeah. yeah. Actually, right now, um, we've got the most complicated part, which yeah. was the um, the matching thing. Now, this, if, if I had more experience on this kind of things, because my, my area is just buoys and stuff like that, but this algorithm of matching people is not something that I have done before. But for now, it looks like we've got the best match of, we add them up to the match front, uh, object. Now, let's go ahead and, this is something, this is the match. Take one color, compare with each mentee. We did that. And my select the best match up is here. This is what we're doing. Add them up to the match up object is about here. So that's what we did, right? So we're almost done. We're logging the match up to a file that, yes, has, right. So we can just go ahead and- nine, we've, we've actually, you know, you're, the other ones we've done as well. The, we haven't done 77, but the ones after that, um, at least the 78 and 79 we've done. I'm not sure what you mean. Wait. On your rows, 78, remove mentor from mentor's object. We don't actually have to do 78. It turns oh, out. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so, yeah, exactly. As it's so, iterating over them, it doesn't go back over them. So that's not needed, but 79. Yeah. Right. And Here then, we, so right. what we're going to do is we're going to lock, lock the match up, and that is going to be the match mentor ID. So this is the mentor ID I want to say matched mentor ID I'm sorry this is going to be like this to I don't know if you want this text or just the ID with it as a tab delimited tab, file. tab delimited is perfect yeah that's yeah, that's also, the best right so yeah. It would be kind of like, I was thinking about a log file, but- But what I would like to do is to that. throw in a header row of just to right. remind myself that, you know, mentor or mentee is- Right, the, so now um, we could just, tour, mm. yeah, let's do it like this, it's okay. Um, and don't forget um, the line breaks, the new lines on the end of each. Right, so this. Right. Like I always do. <laughs> the first time you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, I forgot to add that. Uh, I don't remember if there's a, 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 a thing for a new line that never used it. There's, so I, this there's is going to be a TXT file. Yeah. It's going to be there. I don't know if there's one of those, but that doesn't matter. So this is just gonna happen once, actually. It's gonna happen just, I'm gonna put it, I don't know when we start the. Yeah, and, and, and write one before it to delete the file. Sorry? Um, Cause when we run it multiple times, we, we wanna have it deleting the file uh, cause when you're going to use that a pen later, it would end up keep adding to it. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I don't want to call it. It's one thing I don't like about the file append is it's not a simple way to say, "Hey, blank this, file." You know. Right. No. Well, it depends. Um, and this is just going to be here. File exists. Yeah. Let's maybe match what it's to. And just go ahead and do it. Um, go ahead and append to it the, the rows. Now, 
here we are logging up the mentor, the mentee, and a new line into the file. That's going to be like that. Then after we finish that off, now um, we're going to go ahead and loop over for mentee. So that's going to be I and mentee. So those are the ones that are left, right? So those are the ones that are left um, without matching, right? So do I want to just, what do I want to do? Dump it completely like the whole object or dumping um, just the ID of the mentees that were not paired? Just the ID um, is fine. Okay, so again, we're gonna go ahead and do something as well here. At least for now. Um, Right, I think we. I think at the end, matching the uh, dumping the whole thing might be a good idea. Well, what, what I'm trying to think through is: is there any possibility a mentor would not get assigned somebody? Well, not the mentor, but there's a lot of mentees that are going to stay without a mentor. Yeah, but are you sure about not the mentor? If the mentor doesn't match on anything. Oh yeah, that's true. If he doesn't, if if the, if a mentor. Is not um, has topics that nobody wants to learn about. Right. Yeah, he's going to stay out. Right. Of, and of and I, I, we would want to at least account for that. This is these are our matches, right? So that's our matches. Yeah. Now, from our not matched, we could either. Now that's the thing. So the only thing that we need is the IDs, right? Now, I just want to make sure, like, if whether it is a, I, I can just put the IDs in one column, and whether it is some, if it is a, a, a mentee or a mentor on another oh, column. To restate it though, because that ID is actually the same for both files. So you'd be saying, did they not match based as a mentor or mentee, right? Because some people are both. Oh, right. So, yeah, right. But, but, just, I'm just clarifying it. I know what you're doing. It's just you're saying. No, but we could we could have like different files. One. No, it's, it's fine putting them in the same file. You're fine putting the same file. All I'm saying is, um, you know, it's like you know this ID and how it didn't match. You know, didn't match on a mentee or a mentor, right? It's, but it's the same ID for this. The IDs theoretically, someone somehow could be in there twice, right? Like. Right. Yeah. So 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 here ID. Type so that'd be the idea of the person, and the type would be with whether he was a mentor or a mentee, right? Well, but the problem what comes to, right as so, a mentor or mentee, yeah. So I should have it. Um, so you know what, mentor tab, um, mentee, and we would have for mentor, it would be like oh, okay, a so true one or false, one. Yeah. right? So that would be like. Either true or false or zero or one. Maybe that right. might get it. How, know. how it didn't match, right? Right. So, and I would have to do the same for the mentors, right? Now, for mentors that didn't match, um, uh, let me start with the mentees because I know that this one is something that we will see the actual results right away. What we are going to do is that we're going to file a pen and we selected the file not matched txt, right? And what we are going to append, and we're going to append is three things. First of all, his ID, so that's mentee ID, um, then a tab, then um, whether he was in this case the we know the, yeah we know that it's not that so we're going to put two tabs in there and then um we're going to put true that's that's going to be a one on each of those little lines that's what it's going to happen so let's put this like this so space right so the mentee for hold on you want two in there? And that's what I was kind of like thinking. So I, I just put the ID only one because the third one would be the mentee. So that's what it's going to happen. So 
element G that is there. Now, for the mentor, you, you need to put a. Oh, you did put true. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're good. Right. So, so at least it's going to put a one in there. Yeah. Now, here's the problem. You see here for the mentors, if we don't pop them out, we, well, you're going to have all the mentors here. Yeah, but, that's not what we want. Right. But you can do some logic and see if the. Oh, yeah. If, the, if they don't have a mentee. So, yes. Right. So right. if. Um, and I could just do it like this. If mentor. And I have this mentee thing, right? Mt. No, actually, yeah. if if it's not right, if it's no, not well, uh, if a mentor is so yeah. So what you want to say is not there. Then I'm going to go ahead and file a pending. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's funny. Case, you you do a lot like me of copy and paste rather than trying to type and screw something up. No, no, that that's actually better for you. Absolutely, to, yeah. No, of course. I see a lot of people try and type it, and it's it leads no, to stupid error, make... right? <laughs> no, if I have this, and I know that I just have to take the tab in there, right? That's okay. That's not a problem. Yeah, so, so this, that extra, extra according to logic, should. I'm sorry. But you want a tab after the true, don't you? For what? You I don't have any. Oh, and we forgot our new lines. Right. Yeah. That that's true. Right. Now, what we're going to do, I'm just going to kind of like check what it is appending to, right? So um, in any case, I know this first part is working. In the end, I'm going to, what I want to do when I finish with that is just check on the, on the object and the file. And the object and the file should stay the same, right? So that's good. Now, at the end, I'm going to check on this file pens because I don't know what. What did you do? Why aren't you there? You go. So, um, I want my match, and I have a few people here now. Um, this is my match. This doesn't look the same to me. One and twenty-four. No, three and one. Wait, how come three be in there multiple times? Yeah, that's a question. It's a good question. Now, four and five, ten actually matched several people. That's what happens. So when they're matching several people, it's kind of like logging them off. Um but the object in here does not look like it would do that. Did you? And maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'm logging the file while I'm matching. Maybe, yeah, that's what is going on. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's not there. That should happen. Um, when do we match? After. When do we, right. So here, when we when we delete, um, we still have it. Right. So maybe that's a better idea. Let's take a look at it. No, oh, there you go. Good. Yep. Oh, wait, no, it's not good. That's not right. Good. Mentee got right. So, hold on. Oh, man, we're matching it wrong. It's, it's not good. So, hold on. Um, mentee ID, but this, this is the thing. So, oh, because we're logging out of the mentee here, but I just want it to be. Outside of this, hold on, no, that's not good. The thing is that that happens three or four times. Then, after I finish checking for the mentees, I just Why want don't you... to no, hold on. And the thing is that I was I was making a mistake down here. So my mentor is the static because we use for mentor, but then I just need the where is it? Um, Why don't you match mentor ID? So this is what I need. Match mentor ID. This is what I'm looking for. That's better. So I hope I, this is like that. So this will give me the number that is stored in the match object, which is correct. So the match object is going to have, for example, 
for mentor ID. So hold on, mentor ID. So match is gonna have a mentor ID of one and it's gonna return 24. So I'm gonna match the one to the 24. Yeah, this is better. Now it should look like cool. the one that I have here. So down one is 24, three is 28, four is five. Nice. So now we have the, the correct. Yep. So that's okay. That was for that one. Now here. Did we add the file you... delete at the beginning for the. the... Yeah, I, I copy pasted. Okay. So everything is just the same. Awesome. Right, so, yeah. That's the cool thing about copy pasting. You don't have to think about it that long. Right. So now here, this is the one that I wanted to kind of like know. So the ID is three. So this is one. So, so let's go ahead and first take a look at the mentees that didn't match, right? So mentees here that didn't match are those guys. So number three didn't match as a mentee, right? So if I look at my file, I don't have a mentee number three. So I know that that's right. Mm, yeah, so I'm that's my mentee. Right. Now I'm gonna match, set him as true because he didn't match, right? So that's that's right. And I am expecting that is gonna work. Um, what? What happened there? Not matched. So for the mentors, <laughs> hold on. Now there's something you know what? It doesn't look, this is funny, but I'm gonna show you something interesting. If you dump this onto Excel, it might look a little bit different, right? So the three is matching as a mentor, that's weird. So hold on. And what is this three one all the time? So you probably don't have a tab in the, in between the stuff. It's right, no. I did have a tab for this guy here. And that's the reason why I had two tabs at the beginning, remember? So let me see. The three is the ID, then we have a tab, and then we have another tab. So those are the mentees that didn't work. That's what happens. So let me see that. At the beginning here, this might work a little bit better. Now, for this thing, right. um, but you want one of those to be a one, don't you? Oh, you, you do have the true. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. I do have oh, the true. But now, but now, yeah. So, but now you will see now. It's just a tab that was m missing, um, and now. Um, it, it isn't, you don't look, you don't see it there, but it should be, oh, as it was opened, maybe it was not saved because Excel kind of like- Excel does locks, lock files. Right, right, it locks the files. Which is odd, especially text files. I, I it, that, that always throws me. Yeah, he is very right. annoying, right. Them, you know, versus site or, you know, notepad. Right, any, 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 any other yeah. thing. So now you see that now, we have the ID, then it hit right. the tab, and then it hit another tab, and then it adds, which is kind of weird, but yeah. Those are mentees that didn't get saved. So right. that's good. Because all the mentors got mapped, right? They right. lined up, yeah, with somebody. Right. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, this thing is not working as I thought. So the men mentor dot mentee. So let's go ahead and look for that mentor should have a guy called mentee there, but I don't see it, which is funny because on mentors, each of them. Well, isn't I, th I thought they got saved. It's well, we, we could use the match, right, right, yes. right, right, right. We changed that, right, sorry, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> so the match, so for mentoring mentors, so for each mentor, I'm going to grab the match that has that mentor ID. So I'm going to grab that and that mentor ID is going to come up with a number or not a number, right? Fine. Now, when we append it, 
I'm going to grab the mentee ID. No, it's the mentor ID. Then we're going to have a tab there. I'm going to set true. And then we're going to have another tab. And then we're going to go. I don't I don't think we need the last tab, but let's have it anyways. So the mentor ID, this here, So let's see, match, so we have match, mentor ID. So the mentor ID, sorry, it's gonna be um, one here. So it's gonna have one, that's gonna have a 24. So this should jump it because he's matched, mm -hmm. right? So he jumped in. Now I'm gonna do that for, so right now it's gonna be empty for mentors because they all matched. Right, so now my file, so my file for the not match should only contain the mentees that didn't match because in this round, all the all the mentors matched. So all the mentors did match in this round. So I will not have anybody like this down here. Okay, so I think now it is working fine. And now if we actually give him a lot of data, Right. It should right. not fail. So basically yeah. right now we have a programmatic way to go through this. Right? Now the cool thing is even though it took a little longer for me to do it this way, but as you can see, I was all the time output debugging everything. So I'm sure that everything is working almost perfectly fine. I would be surprised to find some bugs. See what I mean? Yeah. It is very, very, very easy for you to now pump a lot of data to it just to check. And this at the top, we just change it to um, select the file that you want and that's it. Yeah, and, and that was actually one of the things I was gonna um, round this all up and maybe we when we edit it, we'll put it at the beginning of like lessons learned. Um, and one was your use of the debug window, more importantly, the output debug iteratively going over value by value, right? And seeing right. right then as you step through it, what's there How it looks like, right? compared to most people. I mean, you might use a message box, but then of course it's it's like, it can be confusing and you want, then you got to put in a lot of message boxes and stuff, but. And then you have to comment out all the message boxes at the end, which yeah, I don't right. have to do. Yeah. Or they, um, they'll look at the whole thing and that's where it becomes really hard to tease out these little things. Right. right. And, 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 and as I can break on a specific locations, right? Yeah. So I, I just want to see this loop line by line. Well, I break inside the loop. Right. Now I don't care about the loop. I just take that breakpoint and put the breakpoint outside of it. It will do the whole loop and then I just stop. You see, so I could control where I want to actually debug my code. Right. And in the end, what is going to happen is that right now my program is working fine, right? So I see the table. And it gives me all the things that it was kind of like doing. You see that? And I keep a log of it, even though if you run my script from here, right. you're not going to even notice. That's right? a so, excellent point. Right. Right. So yes. you're not going to even notice that that yeah. is happening. Yeah. But for me as a developer, I can just come here and I know exactly what it did. I know that it matched text manipulation for 20C and 15. Yeah. So you see, so I can see it all the time whenever I actually type whenever I care about it. Um, but this is the cool thing about output debugs and um, and actually using this type of debugging window. It is a little bit more time consuming, but in the end, when you ship out the product, you know that you check everything that you could check. If there's a bug, it might be like, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't do anything else to figure that one, you know, but at least I knew that every single step of my program was kind of like debug at least a little bit the, the initial yeah. steps, and everything looks kind of like organized and everything is okay now. <laughs> the the other one was, and I and I know you hadn't done something like this necessarily before, but dealing with uh, multi dimensional arrays, you know, even if you're used to objects, it's it's complex, right? And you got to baby step through it, no matter how often you do this stuff. You just gotta, you know. I'm gonna tell you something. Stuff. No, no, no. So I'm going to tell you something. That's actually a quirk of the language. Mm. Because the language itself tells you that if you have an object, right, and you declare it like that, 
you can just go ahead and say object dot test and put a text in there, right? And then it simply it simply works. So if you do that, it simply works. Yeah. So I I was expecting, and it is kind of like a logical thing that if I could do that, so if I could just add this guy test like this, right? Which works, by the way. So if I just do message box object test, if I can do this, right? So if I can do that, which is totally fine, then why can't I just put a second dimension yeah. here, like right. new? Why doesn't that one work? So you see, this is something, this one is going to come empty. Now, the reason for this is the language triggers you to understand that if you assign something to something that didn't exist, it gets created automatically. It tends, it makes you think like, well, then right. if this one you doesn't exist, right. Then, right. then that should be created. It doesn't happen that way when you're doing more multidimensional. Right. So that in that case, you would actually have to tell our hotkey that this particular object is um, also an object, and now it will actually understand, oh, that's what you wanted to do. Right. Which is kind of like, it, it adds an extra step. I would I would love it if, if I could do it in one step like this. Sure. The language should do it itself. But this is actually a quirk of the language. It's not that we're doing anything wrong. The logic actually follows normally, right? But the language itself doesn't allow you. Maybe because of the implementation, maybe it's difficult to do that for them or whatever. But you just have to keep that in mind. As long as you're working with multi multi-dimensional arrays, then each dimension must be declared on its own. That's what um, that's what I would suggest. You just do that. Yeah. Yeah. The other one, which I'm sure some of you guys have watched some of our other videos, but usually, you know, so far we haven't been diving into literally coding. And this is pretty typical Well, we'll be working on something and we're both looking at it, giving input, talk, trying things, right? Like, and I know, and, and I've worked with other people too. A lot of them do, like Isaiah says, and, and speaks out loud. Even if I'm not here, I'll hear him. Like if I walk out of the room, he's saying it and it, and it helps you. Kind of like figure out where you are, right? <laughs> it really does. Um, I've noticed it from a lot of advanced programmers that they often, you know, it's called like the bobblehead doll approach, right? Yeah, or the it is. Or ducky approach. Or right. <laughs> you have something you explain it to and you're like, oh, when you say it out loud, often you'll be like, well, wait a minute. That's silly. Like, that's why it's not working. Especially uh, what I would suggest, and this is kind of what we did a few minutes ago when we did the first pause. After you have a little while thinking about that one problem, Yep. Your brain kind of locks up. Yeah. And totally. you will not figure it out. So just right. stand up, right. you get drink focused. a little bit of yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. you go ahead, drink yeah. a little bit of water, talk to somebody right. about Walk something away. Else, yeah. And then come back. And then it's gonna be so easy. You say, like, you know what? I figured this one out, right? Isaiah, I'm a big believer, and I have a, that book I, I told you to read, um, with, with yeah. listen to. The he emphasizes a lot is uh give your subconscious, explain yourself the problem. And then, like, go take a nap, right? Go do something yeah. else. Your I will wake up from naps knowing how to solve something often, right? And I'm like, oh, but when I keep beating my head against it, especially... Well, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, in the first couple of minutes, you got a chance at it. After that, like, you, you just, you got to take a break, do something else. Um, especially when you, don't, when you don't know, for example, that, again, my specialty is not this kind of array, kind of working yeah. with this kind of things, because I don't work with data that often. I work with the data that is presented in a GUI and I just yeah. do whatever I want with that data. So I haven't been able, well, I haven't done a lot of um, data manipulation in the sense that we were doing. So I look at these problems, I know how to say it in our hotkey language most of the times, Yeah. but sometimes my brain says like, this is not what you're used to and it breaks, it oh, yeah. just stops, oh, right? So for something bit. so simple, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, when you were using the um, the loop with the um, a loop field and stuff, and like I said, I'm just used to the the for loop. It was silly because I understand how loop and, and a loop field works. However, 
it was you're making not, my brain work harder to under you know to, to and that's the thing even it. though there you know how loops work right you know how for loops work no. but you have never used loops in that way and right it break exactly. it throws you yeah. up right yeah, yeah. and i'm in like my oh case, i should know this but like it's right it's, right, right. And, then, and then it would come back in and my i'm like oh oh wait i get okay, it. okay. Yeah, yeah yeah so in my case yeah. Yep. What I am used to, and this is just a uh, yep. preference of myself, is if I'm dealing with a variable that has linear data, I just parse it. If I'm working with something that has many objects, which is an object in itself, and I want to go over okay. each of the keys, then I go with a for loop. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned something. That's earlier. that's right. that's the reason. That's the reasoning in my head. That might not be how you think about it. You well, think about anything that you have to do yeah. over, you just go with a for loop. That's it, okay. it, yeah, I, it, and cause also because uh, my templates are built in it, I'm like, I just borrow from them, right? Um, right. Yeah. The other one, which was your use of using more of like the index of the thing, instead of using the name of it, you were using several times like the index of where it was referring to things. And so I that's inside the loop here? Yeah, yeah. And I so, don't... Yeah, you see, like this kind of things. Well, I, I mean, like forty-four. See where data, and then you have the one mentees data. Right. One, like, I, I don't use things that way. And when you did that, I'm like, oh, okay, Why I, get, how, I get what it's doing. But, um, and and that's you, you would put like the number in there, like the the for. Let me see if I break here. This is the funny thing about breaks. I could just break here, yeah. and I run my script, and it's just going to stop there, right? So I, I just want to see what am I looking at. And for data here, so we have this data array. And what happens is um, data one, so this is for, I'm sorry, this is the one that I'm looking for. So data, what happens is data here, I'm splitting a line of data. Right. So it has like a lot of numbers yep. and they don't have like a definite name. Uh, for instance, you see when you have like, um, let's look for something else that has like, you know, the headers that you have like the ID and the right. object itself is going to be built on like ID one, API one. You see that it has kind of like a name, right? Like the value that you're looking which for. Which is, right. Which in is what case, I usually do. Right. Right. So in that case, I would do that. But string split yep. actually returns an array. And sure. an array is just the data without a name so it's just one 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 zero i just referring to the first value of it because i know that it is actually an id right if it had the name id on it i would actually rather use id because it's clearer and it's the correct way of coding but when i'm splitting pl splitting a, an array like this the best option would be like just using a data one which i know that is the first position on that array and when i look at the array in this case for the a loop field I know that that is always the ID because the headers that I made before, I know that the first position is always the ID. That's the reason why I did it. Sure. I did it that way, right? So, right. yeah. I know that it, 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 when, when you're not used to looking at it that way, like it, it crashes, yeah. like, oh, what no, is no, no, happening, but, right? Yeah. But, and, and right. I think that's part of the point is to, especially this is part of the thing with mentorship too, right? Is work with people who do things differently than you do. And, you know, it's, it's a little more perfect. painful, but you, the thing is you and I have built up a good relationship where I can go like, I try, I know, I know you know what you're doing. So I'm not going to say, just stop what you're doing, do it my way, right? It's <laughs> go ahead, keep going forward. And then a couple of times you said, well, how would you do it? And we, we looked at that. Right, exactly. So you just give yeah. me your, your yeah. example and I'm like, oh yeah, this is better. Well, it, or... Right, yeah. And it's just, and it, it's what makes sense to you, but it's also, it's good because Sometimes At least I know that I could do like, like for example, when you mentioned this, like right. I could just use the string split here, right, and put a dot one there, right. right? So I could Which do that. Me, like I, I'm like, uh, yeah, I get what that's doing, right? Like because right. I use it so much, I don't have to think about it. <laughs> you are very often uh, you you use that very often. The reason why I don't do it is because then I would have to do it again down here. So yeah. now there's a lot of text for something that. I'm calling a function. Every time you call a function, all that code is executed. So I'm just like, execute yeah. that code once and then just well, refer to it wrong, right? 
you're, you know, you've dumped it into an array and now you're accessing that array directly, kind of like in, you know, like specifically for memory. My way, like you said, it's calling that function every time. And I, and I know I read this at some point somewhere. Every time, anytime you're using like a dot notation with anything, um, it takes a little bit of time for the programming language to kind of piece that together. And right. you're doing it once and then leveraging that you've already done that and, and you know what that, that would be. Yeah. Depending on the type of script that you're actually building, yeah. that is a little bit more fast. Uh, it's a little bit faster yeah, absolutely. than yeah. actually calling the function right. every right. single time, right? Right. Um, in this case, as it is a very small string, my computer is good. This doesn't have a performance heat if I put it in every single sure. place where I want. It doesn't matter. But right. as soon as you're dealing with a lot of data, yeah. that would be a problem. Yeah. And, so, and I know um, for the stuff you're used to dealing with, can you, with, with can you pause for a second? Can you pause for a second? Sorry. There we go. All right. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, the, the, uh, what I was saying was, I know your, your you know, main thing is working, or most often thing is working with GUIs, where you right. often have classes in, in re, what are, instances of the same thing, you even pass hundreds or thousands of whatever. And that's right. where it's like, yeah, I don't, I've almost no, never done that stuff, right. right? So, so I, I guess how you've learned, you know, other ways to- A specific way of yeah. thinking, right. That's true. And actually, one of the things that I was dealing with was, for example, I did a small script that, well, it was a few hundred lines of code that um, it would be an, an inventory manager for a little store and it would grab like a lot of images. And what I wanted to do is like just grab 300 images and very quickly go ahead and add information to them, right? And I did like a list view for it. And now the thing is that after uh, six months using the program, I, I had thousands of images, right? Yes. So very quickly you have 1,000, 2,000 images. Right. And now your list view is not performing right if you don't if you don't code for that little those kind of little things, right? So text, yeah, that's easy. You read the text, you parse it, and that's it. But now when you have a list view that is displaying images, yeah. now you have to read 1,000 images, and now you have to load them all. It it, it had a, a lot of performance issues, and with that mindset, I come here and I, I know that I'm reading just one line of code, like one line of data, but I still think about like, what if I'm reading 10 million lines of data? What, what is gonna happen then, right? Um, and for that reason, I read the whole file first into a memory, and then I go uh, line by line in memory, which is faster than reading the file itself. You see, so it, that's, the, that's what drives me to think in that direction. But in your case, then you say like, okay, what? What happens if I don't have enough memory to load the whole file in memory? Right. Then your solution is the best one. Then you go line by line on the file. So you have to know which battles to pick and which tool you're going to use for that particular battle. Not all, You cannot use the same method over and over again and expect that everything's going to be fine, right? <laughs> well, thank you. Man. And again, what's really awesome great of this is... Uh, as we get more people to join, right, I can automate, you know, running them through and, and just matching up the new ones or, you know, or this or that, right? But um, it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a data set that's going to dynamically change. As I wanted to, to, to learn something, I'm going to remove that from my list, but then I'm going to have something new and that pairings like might change, right? Um, and also I could suddenly, after a little bit of time, say I can teach that thing that I wanted to learn now, right? Right, yeah, so exactly. So that's why I wanted to have a programmatic solution to this to this thing. Yeah. Now the thing is that the, the, the cool thing about the coding is that now that you have this with uh, their variable setup and stuff, now all this part here on the top, you can actually do it and connect to a database and whatever information you get from the database, you can put it in the sure. variable and it's going to right. work the same. So the only thing that you have to change instead of a file read, I could connect yeah. to the database and the data put it on that variable and everything is going to work fine. Right. Yeah. So, and and um, not more importantly, but um, just to ease things in the data set, of course, we have like the email address is the unique ID because everyone had to have an email address and they're unique. Um, that's what we would use for the ID, not some, you know, random variable I've assigned. Um, right. And, and more importantly, at the end, I know exactly who to match up, 
right? It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't have to. You're do gonna have the, yeah. yeah. But we and, can easily adapt the code to 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 do that, right? That's what'll be great. Perfect. And actually, when we when you match stuff, so whenever we match somebody here, right? We could actually do a code to send out an email automatically if you have oh, the email address. Right. So you can just simply just send an email right. to both of them. Say like, yeah, your mentor is this one, your mentee is that one. Right. And you just automated that part. You, you don't have to be like um, doing many things manually. You just figure out, oh, well, I'm matching yeah. it. Then let me notify them right away. <laughs> yeah. Well, well and, and just to take that a step further, then what we would do is go back to the original, both original, the, the raw ones, um, compare the things that they did, you know, here is your mentor. This is what he, you know, can teach you on, right? Here is your mentor, right. here's what he wants to learn, right? And actually then we would say, you know, here's here's the background, because there's other data. We have a lot of other information about them that we would want to use. Um, it wasn't used in the match, but that doesn't mean we wouldn't put it in that email, right? And dump it right. Out. As soon as we do the match, so that would be here, because we remember that if you go in here, you know that it changes the mentee several times, like, Sometimes it matches several people until it finds the highest, right? Right. So maybe here, when we already have the highest, this is where I would notify and stuff. Yeah. And in that case, just compare the topics and just send that in the email as well. Like these are the topics that you're going to talk about. Um, because I do know what they matched. Right. That's right. Yeah. So I know exactly what they matched on. Um, and this is my topic that matched. So I could just save that into a variable that I could just go ahead and here, down here, just add right. it into their, I just, this is the list of topics that you match on. So right. the code that we did is easily yeah, extendable updated. to, yeah, 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 extendable to other things that right. you want to do because right. you have all the information right there, right? Awesome, man. Well, this was, it was a long journey, but um, it right. was, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, there's some good lessons in here. Um, yeah. And, Thankfully, I'll finally have some match data where I can start connecting people to each other. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, there you go. So we'll talk later. All right, man. Thank you. Bye.